Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, on behalf of Accustats Video Productions, it's our pleasure to welcome you to the 2016 Accustats Make It Happen 8-Ball Invitational. <laughs> Thank you very much. We're in the Aramis Simonis Arena here at Sandcastle Billiards in Edison, New Jersey, where we've been for a number of years. It's the home of AccuStats, and it's the home of the Make It Happen series. This is the ninth edition of Mr. Fleming's creation, which began in 2012 with an eight ball event. We've done that a couple of times. We're gonna do it again for you here this week. And we have once again, with your cooperation, invited six of the world's best players to come here and compete in a round robin format, playing eight ball race to 10 games. Now each player will play everybody else once over the four day period, so they'll all play five matches. And at the conclusion of the seven o'clock match on Sunday night, we'll have our players with the two best records compete in a one match playoff for the championship. That'll be about 9.30 on Sunday evening. Before I introduce our competitors for the last match tonight, I'd like to take another opportunity to express on behalf of AccuStats and our great champions, how much we appreciate the support of our three signature sponsors, Aramith, Simonis, and Diamond Billiard Products, there's no better equipment in the country or in the world, and we're glad to have them once again supporting us throughout the years. Thank you. And speaking of supporting us, none of this would take place without each and every one of you great, loyal AccuStats customers out there that have been with us for so many years, and for each and every one of you that have made your way to ringside here to watch live with us. Believe me, it means a lot to the players. They appreciate it. We appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you all once again for making it happen. Okay, both these players have played once already. They'll be playing again right now, and it's now my honor to introduce them to you. Our first player is from Trinity, Florida. Among this gentleman's accomplishments over his illustrious career include a BCA Open Nine Ball Championship, and he's also a former Billiards Digest Player of the Year. He has a uh, group of DVDs out called School of Pool, and if you're interested, you can talk to him later on during the week about how to obtain those. He's sponsored by Miyuchi. We call him the Prince of Pool. Would you please welcome Corey Duell? <laughs> Thanks, everybody. His opponent's from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Yeah, he's got a long list of accomplishments. I don't have enough time to tell you about him, but he is a two-time World Pool Masters champion, and he is the reigning U.S. bar table eight-ball champion, having won that just earlier this year. Sponsored by Q-Tech, ladies and gentlemen, there's only one South Dakota kid, Shane Van Boning. Okay, guys, go ahead and lag for the break. Your referee in charge of the match is Mr. Carswell Ransom. Your official timekeeper is Ms. Julie Ha. Official photographer, Carl Kantrowitz. And at this time, it's my pleasure to send it to the booth to the voice of AccuStats, Billy Incardona, and a very, very special guest, Dynamite Darren, Darren Appleton. Take it away, guys. From Sandcastle Billiards in Edison, New Jersey, this is the Make It Happen 8-Ball Invitational. And yes, we do have a special guest to join us for this feature match, Mr. Darren Appleton. How you doing, Darren? Very good, Billy. Thank yeah. you very much. It's an right. honor to be here. Very excited to be commentating alongside you. Yeah, that's great. That's great. And I'm really, uh, I'm really looking forward to this because, um, you know, you're regarded as the best eight ball player in the world today. But of course, people really don't know how you really think when you're at the table. Yeah. Now we have a chance, with an opportunity to hear you as the match progresses. We'll see how you would play balls yeah. and how you're thinking. And this is going to be a real treat, yeah, certainly for me, for sure. I'll try. Yeah, I probably feel a bit more pressure in this commentary box than I did playing it earlier against uh, <laughs> Corey. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. You know, I, I, I mentioned before I was going to ask you a tricky question, and it has something to do with what you just said. Mm -hmm. You know, when you walk to the table when we're playing in a tournament where this, mm -hmm. this is an eight ball tournament as opposed to nine ball or one pocket or straight pool, is there a special feeling that you have when you walk to the table yeah. in an eight ball uh, tournament? Yeah, I must say, uh, even more so now, Billy, because yeah. I've had such a bad year playing rotation. 
Uh, just playing pool in general, I've had a, I've had probably the worst year of my career actually. Uh, but before this tournament, I'm thinking, oh, I'm playing eight ball, uh-huh. and that's giving me a lot of confidence. Just coming here, thinking, oh, at least I'm playing a game I'm very comfortable playing, and I feel like a favourite. Absolutely, and, yeah. uh, that's the first time I've really felt it before, to be honest. Because I think everyone's a great player anyway at all the games. But at eight ball, I just obviously, this is what I grew up playing. Uh, so it, 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 to me, it just comes very easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I thought so. I, I, uh, I see the patterns very quickly and just see the game uh, even easier when I'm watching as well. So. Mm. Uh, so I come here with a lot of confidence and I played really good today. So that's given me a lot of confidence for the rest of the tournament. Right, and, and the, the most important day, with the exception, obviously, of the last day, is the first day. Yeah. You know, when the first day really sets the tone in, in, in a lot of cases on how you're going to play for the remainder of the tournament. Yeah. And if there's any indication how you're going to play for the rest of the tournament, well, how you play today, yeah. I look for you to do yeah. really well in this tournament. Big time, yeah. I yeah. mean, your first match is massive, just to get your confidence, get a feel for the arena, get a feel for your game, really. You, yeah. Because I come here thinking, am I going to? Because I've, I've, I've been playing good in practice the past week, but you never really know until you get to that match arena mm-hmm. so that really is a nice test for me and uh, looking forward to the rest of the tournament okay yeah, now let's take pressure off <laughs> let's take a look at the situation at hand here and i was van bonings at the table he has the stripes the 10 ball seems like it's a little tied up uh, next to the five i don't know if it can pass mm. the three into the uh, lower left hand corner i do believe it can yeah i think he's maybe got three quarters of the pocket for the 10 ball uh uh, just looking at the table and not the monitor, I think it just about passes a free ball. If that does, then obviously it's a basic uh, run out. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, you leave the 15 and the 10, his last two balls. Uh, and uh, yeah, Shane, uh, Shane's probably actually a stronger eight ball player on a bar table than he is on a big on a big table, in my opinion, which I don't really understand. Mm-hmm. But that's he seems to have a bit more success on the bar table's eight ball than he does on the big table. Eight ball, oh, uh, which with his break, you think it 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 it'd be more successful on the big table, right? Well, he's very very co- confident on, on any table he plays on. But oh, on yeah. the bar table, since he really dominated yeah. the bar table play, you know, throughout his career, he really feels comfortable on the bar table. Yeah, but you think his break would show up more on the big table than it would on a bar table? Uh, but nice nice start here. I mean, his, his break's such a big, big weapon. It's incredible. Oh, it certainly is. And it's even more of a weapon when you're playing open table after the break. Yeah, for sure. You know? At least here, he's not guaranteed an easy run out after right, the break. Right, Because it's take what you make. So it, lends, it actually lessens the uh, the strength of the break. Rack number one goes to Van Boning, and he takes an early lead in the match. Race to 10, one to nothing. Yeah, my biggest worry for Corey in this match is his break. Because uh, he was cup breaking against me, he sort of broke him okay in the first two or three games. But after that, he was miss hitting the break. He was miss hitting the break, which is a big concern. So I actually told him uh, I happened to, to I, I happened to give him a, a ride over here for this match from the hotel, and I said to him, I said, "You breaking from that cup break on this table, isn't it? You, you're not going to win many matches." So I think you're going to see him break from the middle of the table. Mm-hmm. In this well, yeah. well really, really playing you in your match with Corey, he really didn't have that many opportunities to break the balls. He only yeah. won four games, yeah. which means that, uh, you, you know, he only... Well, of course, you were play, well, playing all in a break. Oh, you're you're correct. To the My, side mistake. Rail again, which My mistake. This My is mistake. surprising to me because I told him to break. I said, this has got no future for me. Yeah. Well, that's disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> We eat them pretty good. Well, they didn't really open up well, but you know, I believe that if you get if you can get the balls to open up and you're somewhat productive off the break, I think that's the way you have to break them. That yeah. side, you know, hitting the side of the stack, them balls really doesn't they don't open up as well yeah. as they do when you go right into the balls. Yeah, for sure. But sometimes you get lucky and they come out nicely like they have now, really. But usually when you play a cup break, the balls are clustered up more because you get one set of balls going. Uh, they're sort of clustered to the side rail. Uh, but in this situation here, he's got. A, if he makes his first shot in the side pocket, then he's got uh, the stripes are looking beautiful. Yeah. Now I think another reason why players opt to go with that cut break is because they get more action on the eight ball. I don't think that's a fair trade-off, you know, to to try to go for the, for the cut break because you get more action on the eight ball. If you make the eight yeah. ball on the break, you win. You know, how often are you going to do that? Yeah, I mean. That's so therefore, like I don't think that's w- even a. Uh, you might do. You might see that once in the old tournament. You might see the eight ball made on the break maybe once in the old tournament if I was a betting guy. 
I'd say you'd be betting under 1.5 for the eight ball on the break. So to be using the cup break thinking you have a chance of making the eight ball, then that's... Uh, Sort of desperation, really. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. <laughs> or, or bad discretion, one of the two. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, like Darren said, well, he's going to go after the uh, the solids yeah, here, this Darren. Really, well, uh, I'm guessing he, he made a stripe on the break. Oh, right? well, but he made two solids. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's he right. made two solids. Nicely struck ball there. He, he, uh, yeah, that's a great shot. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, ex uh, like Billy just said. If you make two stripes and one, uh, sorry, two solids and one stripe, then you are on, you're on solids. Uh, you you stay on the majority of the balls you made, so mm -hmm. that's why you had to take solids there. Uh, so you, sometimes you got to think about that rule because it's easy to forget when you make uh, balls off off each suit off the break. You're thinking, oh, I can take anything, but you can. Now, how would you play this? Would you play for the seven next? Uh, well, I think that's what he's done, and that's not, that's a pretty good option. I, I thought maybe the one or the seven would have been good. Uh, mm -hmm. But this is better because now he don't have to get perfect on his last ball. Uh, so here he probably should play for the... Uh, if he can come back to where he is now, great. But he might play for the six in the corner here. No, he's, he's played to come round. So so, that, so that's fine also. Uh, but some players would have just played for the six in the top pocket there just because uh, you, you haven't got to do anything with a cue ball. But he's sort of going away a little bit, though, with a cue ball. But he might come round the back of the eight ball here. Just like this. Make sure you get the yeah, right side of the six. That's what he's done. Yeah, uh, well, a lot of amateurs might have tried to walk, to play for the six in the corner there, which would have been the wrong thing to do. Uh, so don't be frightened to use the rails when there's a lot of space. Like there, he, he had a lot of space with the cue ball, so he he, uh, he used it very good, and that's one of Corey's main strengths. Right, his cue ball control. Yes, and he's got good cue ball control, but I think you have the best cue ball control of all the players in the tournament, particularly when you were talking about the speed of the cue ball. And you seem to be really in line and in stay in line, and you hit that one particular shot extremely well. That intermediate draw stroke you have it, to the intermediate, you know, range of two three feet. You're able to draw yeah. the ball two three feet with accuracy consistently, which is so huge yeah. when you're playing eight ball. Because eight ball is a game where you really need good speed of the cue ball. Yeah, big time. I think that comes from my uh, English eight ball background and my and obviously since coming to America, playing some straight pull, playing some one pocket, all these shots really come into play. And uh, yeah, just really, them little draw shots, it's very important to get the timing right and trust it. You've got to trust it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you you have to feel it. You you have to feel them shots, and that's and that's the key. And that's what the I mean, m my idols are really good at that. Like people like Efren, and uh, when he was in his prime, and obviously people like uh, Alex Pagaline does mm -hmm. that really good, and De Dennis or 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 Cullo. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's very important, like, to practice them type of shots. And I think it's attributable to how you contact the cue ball, how well you hit that yeah. cue ball where you need to hit it, yeah. you know. And uh, there's a lot to be said about that, by the way. Yeah, because a lot of people with that type of stroke, they'll they'll quit on the shot. When they've got to just draw back two or three feet, they they sort of get a bit too tentative, and then they, they end up quitting on the shot deep. Deacceleration. That's uh, so you you have to just trust going through the oh, cue ball. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Nice and easy. Mm -hmm. And another great break there from Shane. But a little bit, uh, I'm guessing he's on made one of each pillar, right? Yep. So he's got the uh, strike. Looks here. like uh, how many how many balls are left on the table here? Yeah, he's got he's made, yeah, one, made one of each. One yeah. of each. So he's going to take stripes, and if the ten ball passes the eleven, it's a very easy rack again. Yeah, I believe it does. So, uh, and he's perfect on his first ball to get to the 10, so yeah. that's always a bonus. Yeah, he's going to probably clean this side of the table first because it looks like the eight ball is more accessible coming from down table. Yep. So, therefore, he'll probably clean this side of the table first, hitting the 10, the 11, and then the uh, 13 in the side. Yep. See, yeah, balls that are positioned in the center of the table are problematic. Yeah. You know, you really want to get rid of those type of balls, at least in my opinion. Yeah. How about how, what do you feel about that? Yeah, for sure. You you want to play in sections if you can. But the first thing I do after the break is to see where the eight the eight ball is. I mean, that that is a key is to look to see where the eight ball is. And then what I'm doing then is that I'm looking to see which 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 is going to be my last ball, my key ball to get shape on the eight ball. So I, I sort of work uh, backwards when I'm, like, looking at a... Uh, right, exactly. Like a...
planning the uh, game plan. Just yeah. work working backwards, and you'll see the finish a lot quicker. Yeah, it's a very, very good method of determining yeah. which route to take. But uh, I like, you know, doing that as well. But whenever there's balls positioned in the middle of the table, those are the type of balls that are sometimes give you problems. Yeah, for sure. So you got to get rid of them balls. Yeah. Yeah, you usually know. your last ball or two is always like up table or down table depending where the eight ball is and then it gives you a lot of more it gives you a lot more options like here I mean he's played this he's played this rack perfect he couldn't have really he couldn't have he couldn't have uh, he, everything was textbook about this uh, particular rack well it, it's easy when the when the rack's that easy Oh, wow. Yeah, it wasn't a demanding rack. He played it really yeah, perfectly. The with, yeah, with the exception, obviously, <laughs> of the eight ball. And, you know, and, and let's go back to what you were talking about. Sometimes you really let up. Yeah. I think he let he, I think he let up a little bit on, the, on, on that shot, you yeah. know, and you really can't afford to do that, you know, because you know that if, you, if you're betting your life on that ball, yeah, it's yeah. in the pocket for oh, sure. Doubt. I mean, it, doubt. if we, he has that shot to win the world championship, he's never going to miss it. It's in the pocket, exactly. Yeah. So you get a little lackadaisical there. You let up a little bit. And it yeah. Sometimes. Uh, and that happens sometimes. But Shane's with them players, what it happens quite often. But, he only, but he'll only do it once. And that, <laughs> and that is the key. Well, sometimes that's <laughs> once too many. Yeah. You know. But he does it quite a lot, though, in matches. And I think, wow. It sort of gives you that little bit of hope there, and Carl is thinking, "Wow, th this should this is a free opportunity now." But well, not easy rack actually. Uh, but Shane, he, he he can get a bit lazy on them type of shots sometimes, and uh, I'm pretty sure he w he would agree with me. Just because I know his game inside out, yeah. and I've played him so many times, so uh, that was very careless. That's nice control that there. Shot, yeah. Nice control. Well, as you can see, the cue ball finally coming to rest with a nice angle on the six. But he still has that problem down table with the two and the one, there. Yeah. Well, he, I think there's a gap between the two and the rail. So he can get, he, after the free ball, he can land on the side rail with the cue ball and get shape on the one. And then, he, then, they, then he can draw back for the two ball in the same pocket. I he's believe. Got, yeah, he's got to get pretty good on the three, more of a straight angle on the three. Yeah, this is a key shot. Perfect. Like Darren said, now he can rest on that side rail. If he does that, he'll have enough room to pass the two safely, pocket the one, and possibly e either draw back for the two. Yeah, yeah, I think he has to draw back. Because even yeah. if he brushes the two, he's going to end up with a shot. Yeah. Oh, he's played for the combo. Oh, this is surprising. And maybe the... Uh, mm. you know, it looks like he did have enough room to play for a position yeah, for the like one, so. but when he opted to play for the combo... It really surprised both me and Darren. So let's see how well it, this works out. Yeah, he must have not had room there. Otherwise, there's no way he would have played that shot. Because this is a little tricky. This two ball can get away from him here. Absolutely. He can go high here. That two ball can go high. Oh, nice shot. Well, he really finessed that quite nicely, yeah. didn't he? A little bit more than he wanted. But yeah, still yeah, right. <laughs> this is not an anger. Like, you've got to bear down on this shot. Well, usually on TV, this, this is a big pocket, usually on TV. But on this table... Oh, 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 you it, see? It fell in. He just hit it just right. <laughs> yes, he did. And that's a steal. A nice steal. Yeah, that was a gift. Thank you, Mr. Van Boning. So, uh, I guess, uh, is that rack number two? Yep. We don't have the score, uh, the score on the Yeah, I believe it's monitor. One, one, yeah. That's, okay, rack, yeah, that was rack no, number, two, actually one. rack number three. And Duel now takes the uh, one game lead in the match, two games to one. Yeah, that was kind of surprising when he played for the combination from my vantage point. And yeah. even when I looked on the monitor, it looked like he had enough room to pass, yeah. you know, pass the two and yeah. pocket the one. Yeah, it would have been nice to have had a camera at that particular angle just to see if there was a gap. Because you, know, you never know with Corey, he's, he's a bit goofy sometimes the way he plays the game. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to be different. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. We're going to go back to Van Boning when he was at the table, you know, Preparing to shoot the eight. Let's, what did he do here? Let's well, take a look I at it. I think he he come off the shot very quickly. Just took it for granted. There you go. You see, he lifted his head very early, thinking it's an anger, and he couldn't miss it, and wow. just lazy. And you can't be lazy on this table. And when balls are missed like that, they're normally overcut, like he overcut that shot. And if you play the outside of the pocket. You know, you, you, there's a specific side of the pocket you're shooting at. Yeah. I think it's it lends to more. Uh, but like I said, More. you won't you won't see him do that again. In 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 this particular match, he'll uh, he'll give that that uh, that type of shot again. He'll give it hundred percent. Are you saying that's like a wake up call in a sense? Yeah. Uh, hey, what's happening yeah. here? I got to get my game together. 
Yeah. It's easy to do that. Maybe it's, it's uh, I don't know, maybe tiredness or something. You, you, you never know how the players are quite feeling. Uh, so Carr has made a solid, I believe. Uh -huh. So he's, he's going to take solids. They all go, actually. I think the free passes the eight. Uh -huh. It doesn't go in the side pocket. He's played that perfect because now he's... Uh, uh, th this was his problem ball in the rack. So now he's probably going to draw back for the uh, the six and the four ball. He should play for the four if possible. Just like that. So we'll play the four, six, three, one, eight. Sounds uh, sounds pretty good to me. Yeah. Let's see how well he does with it. I'm sure he's going to take the similar uh, a similar path. Or the exact path, you say. The six, then the three, one, and then the eight. But the ten ball seems to be in the path, end up straight in on the three. Yeah. See, that's the only problem. He's well, going to have to draw this ball back, you know, with real good speed, end up decent on the three. Yeah. He, he, he might choose to come off the side rail. But I'll do that. That's okay also. He didn't want to. Really he didn't really want to bump the fifteen, so he, he didn't want to come the left side of the uh, the ten ball as we look on the screen. Right, because the fifteen may have clogged yeah. the pocket. So that was smart play. Yes. He, he's a smart eight ball player. Uh, the, the only thing what lets him down sometimes is his stroke. These type of shots, but he made that one beautiful. Mm, but he's on the wrong side of the one, I believe here. Yeah. Now he's ended up pretty straight on the one, so he may have a little bit of a problem. Coming up with a shot on the eighth. I know he's a favor to do that, but it's certainly not guaranteed. Yeah, he looks pretty comfortable. He's not, he's come around to look at the angle, so I'm guessing he's just about okay. So it's certainly not automatic because there's a lot of indecision out there. Yeah. But let's see how well he does here. It looks like it's coming between the two balls, Billy. The 10 <laughs> yeah. and the 13, is it? Yeah, wow, so yeah, that, that, yeah, great shot. But, of course, like I said, he didn't really end up well on the one. Yeah. But he certainly made a nice recovery there. This is rack number four. Looks like Duel will then have a, th a, th a two-game lead at three games to one, as he does. Three games to one Duel. Uh, he seems quite comfortable out there. Well, it is actually, yeah. I mean, uh, before this match, he was playing a bit of uh, Chinese eight ball, actually. So uh, that might have sharpened his game up a little bit because that table play is really tough. <laughs> yeah, to, talking about Chinese eight ball, yeah, aren't you uh, putting up the, uh, putting together a tour with uh, something similar? Or is it Chinese eight ball? No, it's on is... American tables, but it's uh, called the World Pool Series playing eight ball. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that starts in January. In January? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, do you know uh, your first look at the venue where you're going to Steinway first? Billiards. Oh, Steinway that's a New Billiards York Steinway Billiards. Uh, January the 14th to the 17th. Great, great, yeah, great. Be uh, that'll, be kind of, that'll be something special there. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully grow the game and uh, try and get professional level back in America. Uh, obviously, our Aki stats and the U.S. Open and uh, are leading the way, but besides these type of tournaments and the U.S. Open, there's not a lot happening for the, uh, the pros. Uh, most of the tournaments these days in America are on bar tables, so uh -huh. uh, I don't think that's what professionals should be doing. So I uh, just want to really get involved and uh, try and help the game, really. Right. Uh, another good... Uh, not, not, I mean, he, he, hit, he hit the break good, but he, he nearly scratched on the break there. Which, so that's uh, uh, a little bit of a concern for Shane. Because usually he's, he hits that, that front ball uh, flush all the time. Right. That seems to be one of his better shots. He has a lot of them, but the break is one of his better shots. He does practice the break prior to all matches he plays, so therefore it's not often we see him hit the break poorly. Yeah. Well, this is where I like to take what you make. Even though he's got the... He's slightly got probably the the second uh, worst set of... He's, he's, he's probably got the worst set of balls here uh, as the balls lay. Uh, I mean, solids were uh, looking really easy, but Stripes has got work to do here because I don't... I don't Sure, if the ten passes a two, Billy. I think I think the ten does pass the two, but it's got to be hit well. Yeah. Uh, I think there's enough room for it to hit, for it to hit the cushion and go in. Yeah. And then if he sticks right there for the fourteen, if he pockets the ten, sticks for the fourteen, yeah. then he should get out here. But this is the mm -hmm. this is the crux of the uh, of the rack here, the problematic part of the rack right here. He has to hit this with good pocket speed, stop the cue ball for shape on the fourteen. Well, there's one thing for sure. It'll be. Uh He'll be give, he won't. He'll be t giving this 110 percent because it's the same pocket he missed the eight ball. Mm, right, and we do have good memories, don't we, about what yeah. pocket we miss balls in, yeah, don't yeah, we? Yeah. And uh, I'm certainly sure he was well aware of that. Yeah. As he bears down on the ten, hits it very nicely, and looks like he's going to win 
game number five here and come to within one game of the lead. It's right now it's three to one duel. He's looking to come to within one game of the lead at three to two here. Yeah, and besides missing that eight ball, this match has been a really good standard so far. The level's been very high. Uh, some nice runouts, uh, and uh, th this game could go to the wire. Yeah, I figured that this match was going to go right down to the wire. I, I figured that both of these players, you know, are, are obviously top players, and, and I think they were pretty comparable in terms of you know, efficiency and how well they play the game, you know. Uh, I just think that, I think Corey technically is a little bit better eight ball player than, than Shane. Yeah. I think Shane's break and his ball pocketing ability, I think that makes up a little bit for that tech, technical yeah. part of the game. And I, and I thought it was going to come right down to the wire like you did. Yeah, for sure. I, I totally like you agree do. with that. Uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, Corey's uh, a very, very smart player. Uh Sometimes he just uh, doesn't stroke the ball as consistent as, let's say, someone like Shane or a Jason. So he'll like miss the odd, the odd, the odd silly ball from yeah. nowhere. You think, oh, he's playing really good, and then he'll miss a ball, and you think, wow. And uh, <laughs> at this level, yeah, yeah at this yeah. level, it's huge. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, uh, how, how, how do you like? improve on that I mean do you think yeah. that's carelessness or what I think it's uh, I think he's always trying to improve his stroke but I think he's trying to analyze his stroke too much uh, Keith's telling me every time I see him he's saying oh I'm trying this I'm doing this and I think well you've been playing a long time you've had a lot of success in the past with a, a stroke what was working so I think you can try and change something too much and then it can sort of and then it's you're not playing your natural game anymore you're thinking too many things while you're playing Okay, now, Darren, once again, breaking from the side, he's, mm. he's not really spreading the balls well. I think that in the long run, that's going to hurt him because, yeah. you know, it's an advantage to break the balls, be, it, be the first one at the table, particularly on a table that you can, you know, produce uh, balls on. And, yeah. uh, and that's where you get paid off. Now, if he continues to walk to the table with a lot of clusters out there, I don't think he's going to do as well. Well, I think what's going to happen, like you say, Billy, is that, Corey's having to work a lot harder than Shane. Right, he's not going to do as uh, well because of that. Yeah, because on his break, he's like he's making a ball in the break, so he's having to do all the hard work just to try and get through each rack where right. Shane's breaking, and they're, they're like he breaks so good, and the, the balls are laying nicely after the break, so it's a lot less uh, thinking and a, a lot a lot less stress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where Corey, he isn't he isn't going to keep making these type of clearances throughout this match where if Shane keeps breaking the way he's breaking then it's going to be the game's going to come very easy to him and he, he doesn't he doesn't use as much energy because of that and also it gives you a lot of confidence knowing you've got that uh, that uh, that big that big break gives you a lot of confidence he decides to play safe uh, I'm guessing he's uh well there's another Example of what we were talking about, right? Yeah. He made Another solids, week. so he's on solids. So Shane's on stripes. Yeah. But the key is, does does the 15 have a pocket? Does, uh, I believe it does. If it does, then Shane's got a great opportunity. Yeah, here, I believe the 12 it does have a pocket. So Corey's made a bad mistake there. Uh, let me ask you a question here. You know, you, you can really widen the pocket by playing the 13 into the rail first and then into the 9. Yeah. And because if you go straight for the pocket and you happen to hit that point... You know, to the left of the nine, I don't think you're going to get the ball. He's going to the side here. Yeah, yeah, that's the reason. Uh, but I, sure. I like playing the 13 into the rail into the nine. It's so easy, that shot. And what about if you play it like that? Well, when, you know, when you <laughs> shoot that straight. But uh, well, I'll tell you, you know. what was good about that shot, Billy. If you look at the cue ball, he left the cue ball purposely in that spot because he knows if, if he misses that ball, he's probably not going to leave Corey a shot. Because the one ball doesn't pass the three, and it doesn't cut in the side pocket from where the cue ball is. So he played actually a two-way shot there. And also, if you cut the, uh, the 13 into the rail and then play it, or the 12 into the rail and then play it off the nine, your cue ball is going to the right, and it may create a problem yeah. with congestion at this end sure, of the table. Yeah. So therefore, he wanted to make sure he stayed away from that. He's very he, smart shot. He used real good judgment and great execution. Yep. But he, uh, and he took a bit of pressure off the shot, just knowing that if he missed... He probably wouldn't leave Corey a shot, and that's perfect, nearly. Yeah, yeah no, is, he's okay perfect. now, yeah. So now he's got a... Uh, well, now it's an easy rack. Yeah. Uh, so he's going to play uh, the 13 in the side first. He's just looking at the 10 ball. That's only... But everything's laying nicely. It's just... Sometimes you've got a lot of options. You can confuse yourself. 
So he, he, he needs to try and pick his option and then really commit to that first plan. Well, it looks like the 10 ball is a little problem here. It's a little bit of a problem out there, the 10 ball. Yeah. So you would like to, if you could pick out, if you could pick up a ball and get rid of it, it would be the 10 ball. Yeah. So therefore, you know, that's why you want to try to look at a, a situation sometimes. What ball would you like to pick up and put in the pocket? And that's the ball you have to get rid of quickly. Yeah. Uh, I thought it would have rolled through, though, with the for the 11, which would have been perfect to play the 10 in the top right. But he sort of played a little stun shot into the 10. So that might, so that means the 10 ball might pass the 1. But with his facial expression, he's yeah, sort It of, means it doesn't <laughs> pass the 1. <laughs> he's sort of thinking, uh, I've, been a bit, I've been a bit careless here. Yeah. But he should be okay. He's got so many options. Well, it looks like he's going to have to play 14, 15 here and try to do it the best he can, train position for the 10 as his key ball to the 8. Something he really didn't want to do, but I think he's forced to do that. Yeah, I think I'll play the 10 ball now, really. You know, that wouldn't be a bad thing to do, playing yeah. the 10 ball now, then playing the 15 and going cross for the 14 in the side. Yeah, that's a good thing with 8 ball, is that you haven't always got to stick to your original plan. The, it's always important like to play into areas and then you, 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 give, you give yourself two or three options. Uh, so if you don't if you don't stick to your original plan, which is very, it's difficult to do that all all the time. It's important to have a backup and not and not let it upset you when you're not sticking to your ori original pattern. Yeah, you know, I understand you lose a little to, uh, confidence yeah. or dignity in a yeah. sense, yeah. but sometimes you have to revise it. I think that uh, he drew pretty close to the 15. Yeah, I mean he has made a bit of a mess of it, but he's just about okay, I guess. Got to be careful here, though. Yeah. Yeah. He's in perfect shape now because now he can comfortably bridge yeah. this shot. He doesn't have to shoot over anything, and that's what he wanted to stay away from. He wanted to make sure he stayed away from shooting over the four, which he has. But on these pockets, got to make sure you really respect this pocket, though. Uh oh, he did. Uh -oh. Well, he did. well, I thought he hit a little too. But you see there, if the pockets were playing generous, he probably would have played like a soft draw shot there and played for the eight in the same pocket. But because the pockets are not, they're a bit tricky, you, he decided to play at pocket speed and roll right. through for the eight in the side. And it's so important to play shots pocket speed when the pockets are playing difficult. Yeah. You know, you really, you know. Well, that just shows that there's a bit of pressure in this game and it's a tight match, free free. And I think Corey's actually got a pretty decent record against Shane. So I'm guessing, uh, I think they've got a bit of history as well. So that's good. So uh, always a, uh, so uh, they've, they've had a lot of good matches. I've seen these two guys play a lot against each other. And yeah. for some reason, Corey raises his game when he plays Shane, which is easy to do because you have to do that anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you, playing 70% yeah. playing against Shane Van Bowen is not going to get the job done. And and there's a lot less pressure on Corey when he plays Shane because yeah. Shane figures to win, if you will. Yeah. And Corey, you know, sometimes when you go into a match the favorite, you know, there's a lot more pressure on you. I agree. I, th I think Corey is actually a better player when he plays the when when he is a slight uh, yeah. second favorite. And uh, sometimes he he lose to guys who, who he's supposed to beat. Right. It's a different type of pressure. There's <laughs> yeah, a lot of guys exactly. who do that. Exactly. Yes. Uh, but I always tell myself is to make sure why well, I've had a lot of balls. Let's take a look at this situation. He made one, two, three stripes in two solids. Uh -huh. Now he has to take stripes. Now that's a, that's a disadvantage <laughs> when you have too good of a break. Well, when you're too productive on the break, <laughs> that's a disadvantage because now that he only has four stripes hey, made five balls on the to break. choose from, okay? Uh -huh. Which actually lessens his chances of running out. Well, because of how many balls he's made on the break, playing eight ball, that's a disadvantage. Yes, uh, yes. I'm serious. I mean, sometimes that can be a big disadvantage, making that many balls on the break. Uh, you, you sort of want to make maybe two or three balls on the break, and then and then you've got a lot more options at the table. You know what I mean? Where here, I mean, he's, he's tricky. Because <clears throat> uh, he has to take the worst set of balls, where if he had solids, it would have been a lot easier. Now, for instance, take at this situation here. Now, he has a problem here. He you has to deal yeah. with that 11. You have to attack your problem balls very early, and yeah, now yeah. it's to do it. Yeah. They're coming between the three and the two off the top rail and uh, break them out. Oh, he's playing for the side. Yeah. He? Well, that's even, even better. Yeah, I thought that that was like only one of his options, or his best option, was to play for the side with the 11. Yep. But that doesn't mean he's going to get out, because this rack is difficult 
If after he pockets the 11 on the side, he's going to have another shot that's difficult coming either off the 10 or the 9. And I think it's going to be the 10. And, and coming off the 10, it's going to be very difficult for him to control the cue ball. Yeah, I think he's got a slight angle on the 11, but I'm absolutely amazed that he's not getting the rack removed because this, this, uh, this can knock the cue ball off track here. Because he has to come over the, the first part of the rack and then the, the little things what come in. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the little hands water coming in to the rack, that can affect the path of the cue ball here. Mm -hmm. now Darren's talking about the template on the table, yeah, the, template. That, uh, the, the accu rack, that's yeah. the template. And by shooting over the, uh, the template here, sometimes that cue ball rocks a little bit or goes offline. Yeah. And it only, it only takes a little bit too, especially when you don't have much of a pocket to begin with. Yeah, I'd be asking the referee to remove it. I'm not too sure why he's not, but he's actually taking the 11 ball in the top right-hand pocket, which really surprises me. Well, he's not going in the side with it? No, so this is really tough. This is a tough shot here, Billy. And he's going back into the 8 here, it looks like. I don't know, I'm not too sure. Maybe the 8 ball doesn't pass the 2 either. No. Oh, what a great shot. Wow, what a hit. Wow. Now, that's a real pull shot there. Yeah, that's one of the best shots of the day, that. So the eight does pass to two. Yeah. Uh, but that, that's one of the best shots I've seen all day. Mm -hmm. It passes a two by not by much, but uh, certainly but it was an indication that it did, the eight did pass by how he played the uh, the, oven, yeah, just the 11. Yeah. The, the eight does pass. It's just, just, just about got a full pocket. So he's got to get pretty good on the eight when he plays position off the nine to the eight. Not great. It looks like he can. Looks like he's kind of like a, he would like to have drawn it straight back. I don't know if he has that angle. If if he's if if he has the angle where he has to cut the nine slightly to his left, now it lays awkwardly here. I think he might go free rails there, Billy. Well, he's got to be careful. He go right into the six. But of course, if he does that, he'll still end up there with a go. shot. The Nicely struck. Be a problem. Nicely Pretty struck, easy. huh? Perfect speed. Yeah, very nicely struck. And then once again. He doesn't have a full pocket. Well, he just has a full pocket, but only fractionally. So he's got to hit this perfect. If you any movement on this shot, it can be very can be missed. He's nice. already missed one eight. And then see that cue ball rock there. Yeah, but, you know? if, but did you see his eyeballs there? He was really zoned in there. That's yeah. given him a lot of confidence. That that yeah. one rack can can really change a person's mentality. It certainly has. I mean, uh, he has. He did fall behind in this match. Three to one. He's won three consecutive games to take the lead. Yeah. Four to three. But like you said, after missing a ball like he did with that eight ball, yeah. it sort of like wakes you up. He you does know? that a lot, and then he'll wake up and play perfect. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Okay, we're back. Uh, Corey's back at the table. Uh, Shane, I believe, is you know, he's also back. And uh, we're back. So Darren was talking about the attitude and talking about being able to to be re resilient and come back after, after you know, a mistake was made. And uh, that's a lot to be said about that, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, uh, like before, I mean, everyone in their career has a bad spell. Uh, maybe it's like three months, four months, five months, six months. But, it, but it's how he come back. And when that player does come back, he'll probably come back stronger. And he'll probably appreciate the success he had before that. Mm -hmm. Now, whenever you do make a blunder and you you know you lose a little dignity at the table, when you start to play poorly, how do you come back? What do you think about really to to try to get yourself back into the into the groove into stroke? What do you really so, think about during the game? I just think about basics. Just thinking, uh, just keep my head still. Whatever I do, just keep my head still, and everything else will take care of itself. So it's, it's not easy to always have your A game, even your B game. So you've got to really grind it out. So my number one focus is to try and keep keep down on the shot. So what what I tell myself in them big pressure situations, or if I'm not feeling good, is is follow the object ball to the pocket. So I, I just keep my eyes on right. the object ball right. on until it disappears in the mm. pocket. And and keep it simple. Keep the go yeah. back to the basics. Don't try to do more than you figure you can do. Yeah. So you know, because you don't want to make another mistake. So therefore, you bear down. Then yeah, yeah, and that's and, that's, uh, that's good advice. I think that's why I'm pretty consistent stroke because I don't like to use too many rails. So I try and keep the cue ball simple. So that so that can give me my B game uh, is still tough to beat. Where if you're like a really long, powerful stroker and you like to use the rails, if you're slightly off your game, it's difficult. To have a really good B game, I think. Uh, but nice shot there from Kari. Yeah. And then when you get your confidence level up higher, yeah. then you can do a little bit more. And you can take more chances yeah. and yeah. so on. But that's real good advice, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, but it's like eight ball, especially eight ball, more than any other. More than most games is that you have to 
figure out your problem balls very early. Never leave your problem balls until like the end. You, you always want to leave an insurance ball. Right. So when so when you're breaking your balls out or your clusters, always guarantee yourself a shot after breaking that ball. But you don't want to just try and get on that ball you're trying to break, because uh, then you're relying on some luck. Uh, where Corey's a very smart eight ball player, probably a bit, or very underrated actually. As a rule of thumb, whenever you uh, you know take a look at the table and, and, and try to figure out where your problem balls are, you really want to attack. As a rule of thumb, you want to attack your problem balls as soon as possible. And you see, Eli, like, it's kept a nice little section of the balls here, so it's everything's just really. It gives him. He's, he's gave himself a lot of options here. We, we, we're leaving these free free balls till the end. He he can go about two or three different patterns here. All right. He can even go nine eleven if he chooses. Yeah, because the eleven goes in the left. It goes in the right side pocket. The nine is is okay on the nine. He, he could play the nine play for the eleven in the in the right hand side where he's standing. But it looks like he's going to play the eleven then roll it through for the nine in the corner. See, the 11, I believe, goes in either side pocket, so therefore he could play 9 11 too. Yeah, that's why he played a very smart out, because right. he gave himself options. Options, exactly. So he, he didn't have to get absolutely perfect on, uh, on, on, these, on these two balls. And it's always an advantage to have options. Mm. And yeah, that's I, I always try to play into an area, give myself maybe a, two options at least when I'm playing a run out. So... Uh, you can sort of overthink the game a little bit too much, thinking you've got to, you've got to stick to the same pattern. Stick to the same pattern. That, 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 that has more pressure. No, this is a little bit difficult here. Watch the cue ball here. Watch the cue ball. Watch the cue ball. Okay, nicely struck. Well, he's one of the guys with a great cue ball, so uh, beautiful. A very good, uh, awesome standard. Okay, after game number eight, Corey Duell ties up the match at four games apiece. And, you know, he, and he, we're going to watch him break the balls in game number nine. And, you know, that, that cut break or that's, he's hitting the side of the rack, that's really not producing the type of uh, layouts that you would want to have off the break. Well, Therefore, I think that's going to end up costing him if he continues to yeah. break like that. But he won't, he won't be breaking in break in uh, rack number nine. Maybe in rack number ten, you'll see him do the cut break. It's rack number nine, so shame I'm bound into break. Are you saying that it's not Corey's break? Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, anyway, right. we've got nice, nice, colorful you know, shirts. I, you know, I was stuck there. You know, that's, that, <laughs> that, comes, that comes with age, by the way. I, I thought that the winner broke. You know, like I've always seen. Yeah, you've been thinking that well, all day. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I understand. But you're saying it free. You don't, you don't understand. You're saying it free in a couple of weeks, so we'll give you a pass. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Generous, nice, Generous. nice, colorful shirts here. Generous, yeah. Nice and loud, these shirts. Well, I mean, Watch that's, out. That's, that's pretty amazing. Oh. Got quite fortunate the cue ball didn't end up in the side there. He thought it was going on the side, well, by the way. Uh, obviously, he didn't hit the ball square, but the no. way the cue ball come back so far and then and then come forward, it was like a like a golf shot really, where the, where they uh, draw the uh, golf ball back, and that would have been a bit of lucky to scratch from that angle. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's it's amazing the way he hits that break so consistent, even um, when he hits them bad. I mean, is it them bad for him? But to most players, that they're thinking they're happy with that uh, contact. He made two solids on the break. So the two ball is his problem ball, obviously. Mm. So it's sandwiched in between the nine and the ten. So you want to get on that ball as soon as possible. Yeah, but if the six passes the twelve, which I'm pretty sure it does, he's pretty much okay, I think, with this rack. Yeah, it does. So he, 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 he could even have the option here to leave the two ball to last. Uh, because it, it goes in the top left, and it, it might actually play shape for the free ball here, Billy. I don't have the nerve to leave that two ball for last. Yeah, but I, I don't just think don't. he might not have an option here, because if you don't get good on the two ball, and he, it's very hard to get on the seven on the three. So that's why he's playing. He played for the three in the corner, but he's oh, slightly over it. He was going to play the three seven two, which which, which would have been good if he got great on the three, but it can still slow roll the free ball in, but it makes it a little bit more missable. And he isn't guaranteed to get perfect shape on the next ball. But he is pretty usually very good at slow rolling balls, which we we a bit of inside English here, I would think. So he's got a lot of trust in his cue. Mm. 
And he's going to leave the two yeah. for last. Yeah, sometimes you just force a Duva and uh, this rat really... Because he was, because he didn't have a lot of balls to play with. That was a problem, really, from the mm -hmm. start of the game. You know, you want, he wants, he's going to hit this with a little bit of inside, not much. You know, maybe a tip or so of inside. Hit that second rail to go toward the two. He wants to get close to the two if he can. Ooh. Oh, 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 he hit the point. He hit the point. That was very careless of him. I don't think he actually did hit the point, but. Whatever he did, I he, think he hit the point. Well, if he did, that was very careless. But he, whatever he did, he over hit the ball anyway. Yeah, let, we'll go back. Hopefully, uh, you know, like after this rack is over, just to see exactly what he did do wrong. Because I don't believe, I don't believe the angle that the cue ball took off that side. Wow! Wow! Yeah, he he really almost made, made that ball. And that was a lazy stroke as well. He didn't really give any. Uh, very frustrated stroke, let's say. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes when you use inside English or any yeah. type of English, you know, you know that cue ball takes off on you. Yeah, so. I, I'm, I made a Facebook post after my match with Corey. I said that the table's playing nippy and people didn't know what I meant by that. I said the rails are playing, uh, they're sharp. I mean, they're, they're, they're grabbing off the rail. Mm -hmm. So if you don't respect the table, it's going to bite you. And that's what happened there. Where if that was a brand new TV table, that might have held its line a little bit more because it slides more. Well, on, on here, there's no slide. Mm -hmm. There's no skid or slide. It's, there's no slippery stuff. It's just all... Uh, it's, uh, it, this, this is how the table should play. Well done, pal. Well, we're going to replay that shot, but I think that we're going to wait for a better time to do it. But we're going to do that. He's okay. I thought he was going to snooker him there, Billy. I no. He, I thought he would have... Yeah, uh, he could do that, but, the, he, but you know what? That two ball looks like it's going to kiss maybe off the 11 and maybe even off the 13 and go in. So yeah. I don't think he could take a chance yeah. to leave him anything on that two right now, especially when he has an opportunity to get out. Yeah, the, uh, it looked a bit thinner than what it was actually, the previous shot, so... Yeah. My mistake. No, but he has to play. He has to play for the eleven here. Uh, I don't know if he's going to do it this shot, but he's got to do it soon. He should do. I'll be surprised if he doesn't. He's got to play for that eleven. That's the ball he really wants to get rid of. Yeah, he would have liked to have got better on the eleven. Yeah. He's, he's supposed. To, now he'll set the ten. He's going to draw back to the side rail if he has that angle. I think that he should shoot the ten and draw to the side rail if he has that angle. Very easy. Be a little bit careful here. Yes. That's nice. Well, that tells me he feels good. Yeah. Because well, if you don't feel good, you would have took the 10 ball. It's like the coward's way of, uh, like, you don't want to want to play the shot you're supposed to play just because you are you, you don't want to mess it up. So you, you want to play a ball what you, what you know is un unmissable. But that tells me he's feeling good. Well, I don't think he had the angle to draw back off the 10 to where he needed to be for the 11. Maybe, so maybe he you is know, a that, that was so much more simple, really, and, 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 and as effective because, you know, the key ball to the 8, it, it could have been either the yeah. 10 or the or the, uh, the ball up there. It didn't much matter. But uh, okay. I don't think he had the angle. But anyways, he won that game. And now he takes the lead all of a sudden after game number 9, 5 to 4. 5 4, and that's 2 very easy game Shane has given. Let's take a look at that. If we can go back and take uh, take a look at how Shane actually blundered here in game number uh, game number eight. Let's take a look and see if it hits the point. No. No, it didn't. Overspun it. That's why I said uh, uh, after my match with Corey, the table's playing very sharp. Very it nippy. sure is playing sharp for the for the cue ball to depart that rail on yeah. that angle. And bro, this that's, shows you like, really playing sharp. This table plays perfect, right? Because if this was at the US Open, right, two weeks ago at the US Open, there's no way that cue ball would have gone where it's just gone. Yeah. Just because the table played a lot softer at right. the US Open because, right. because the cloth was more more brand new. Mm -hmm. So th this this table plays perfect. Yeah. And you, the, you have to be really careful yeah. on this table. And it's the rails, the cloth on the rails that really make the difference. Yep. And uh, it's the same TV lighting as the US Open. So the, the TV lighting for the Akustats Arena is amazing. He's still going to the side, but he's got much better action that time. Yeah, he's breaking much better in this match, Billy, than what he did against me. 
That's the second half of the match with me. He, 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 he broke awful, to be honest. <laughs> to, to put it kindly, <laughs> he broke terrible. And that made my life a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he, he made a stripe. Yeah. He would have liked solids. So he's, looked, yeah, solids yeah, yeah absolutely. Solids is much better. And he's thinking that. He says, why couldn't I have made solid on the break? Yeah. <laughs> he's got <laughs> some problems out there with, this, with, the, uh, with the stripes here. Well, he's got one big problem ball. Well, two, really. I mean, there's a couple of little problems, but uh, yeah. he, he really needs that 12 is massive, and he needs to get do something very quickly. He might use a 10 ball. Yeah, and draw into it. Draw into the four, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, now he's lost, that, he's lost that angle. Now he can't do that. Yeah. So what he might do, he might just roll forward just a little bit and then play the 14 and go into the four ball. Because I'm, I'm guessing the 11 ball passes a six, which it does. Yeah, and now that's an option. He can just softly roll this in. Yeah, he's no option actually. Try to attain. Uh oh, oh, he try to uh, attain the angle to cut the fourteen and go into the four. Then he'll have, I believe, uh, one of those two balls past the six. Yeah, the eleven passes a six. But this is the key shot here. There's nothing's guaranteed here. Nice. nice, nice. Now he's opened up the pocket. So now, do you play for the uh, hmm. 12 on the rail now, or do you play... I think you got to play for the ball 30. on the rail. I think you got to play for the ball on the rail, because I think it's easier to play shape off the 12 to the 13 than it is to play... But remember, the 13 ball doesn't pass a 6. It only goes right. in the side pocket. So that's why I'll sort of got a feeling he might do that. Usually I'd do that, but he might play for the side pocket first. I kind of like playing for the other ball. This could be... Because now he can play for the side for the 13. Well, this is a tough shot now. Well, you, you, know, I mean, you don't figure to get on top yeah, of yeah. the two. Yeah, I think he had, he had to go that way. But yeah, I, th I think that he chose the right path because now he can play the 13 in the side. Yeah. And if he would have ended up with an angle, then he could have probably, uh, wow. you know, played the 13 in another pocket. Yeah, that was fair. So I think that was the correct path to take. Obviously, he did as well. And let's see how well he does. Yeah, great cue ball control in this uh, rack. Didn't make the balls clean, but he's uh, he's done very well. He's getting out. That's the most important part, yeah. you know. And this is isn't exactly a gimme, but of course. Uh, yeah, they got a bad down on this one as well. Yeah, he's shooting a little bit over the top of the seven. That makes a difference. I mean, he should be okay at this level, but make a little bit of a difference like that. There you go. It wasn't a gimme. He knew it. See, when you shoot over top of a ball, you know, it, you're really not comfortable at the table. Yeah, it puts more tension in your arm. It yeah. naturally puts more tension in your arm because you're having to tense up to avoid hitting the seven ball with your arm. It makes a big difference. But at this level, you're still expecting to make that ball. And that's a massive, massive game for Shane Van Bonin. Because, right. Because uh, he, he had Shane on the ropes, sir. He sure did. You know, Shane did give Corey two breaks, or gifts, I should say, yep, exactly. in this match. That's why you got to punish him. you got to punish him. When Shane and Bonin does that, you have to punish him. you got to stick yeah. it to him, don't you? Yeah. you got to give it. <laughs> <laughs> kick him, kick him, kill him. Texas style. Stick a knife in him, just turn it. Yeah, run over him. <laughs> Go get him, rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kick him. <laughs> You, 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 you remind me of uh, Mickey from uh, Rocky, the trainer. <laughs> you sort of look like him a little bit, also. He was a great actor, that guy. Yeah, a little bit like you. You gotta give it to him, Rocky. <laughs> yeah, he was unbelievable, that guy. Yeah, I think he played a, an amazing role in that film. Yeah. Did he get nominated for a supporting actor, yeah, or did he get it, or what? Yeah, I'm sure I think he did. He, didn't he? he got it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, that's a big let off because that would have been 6-4 uh, to Corey and getting all the momentum and Shane yeah. a little bit slumped in his chair as well during that rack. Yeah, and there's a lot to be said about exactly what you said about whenever a guy gives you a gift like that, oh, you yeah. got to make him pay for it and make him pay dearly for it. Yeah, and the problem yeah. now is that obviously Shane's going to win this rack. He's even going to... He's going to... Forget about the mistake he made. Right. you got to make him feel frustrated, make him feel like, yeah, yeah. bad. you got to keep, him, keep yeah. him in that chair. Paul's a big mental game. Now he's feeling great again. 
Now Is he's it? like two minutes ago he's like really down in himself and now he's feeling great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, amazing. Man. Everything's <laughs> fine though. But you know what you just said, pool really is yeah. a mental yeah. game. Yeah. Because you're the same player that run all those racks on Monday. Yeah. But on Tuesday you make a couple couple mistakes, yeah. your game drops so yeah. much. Yeah, you know, I've seen that happen so often, you know, it's hard to explain. You know, yeah, it's I such think, a it's uh, such a mind game. I mean Paul doesn't really get the uh, respect it deserves uh, for like how tough it is mentally. I mean, it has to be one of the toughest, toughest sports in the world, I think, uh, mentally. Mm, yeah. Because your emotions are so up and down, it's incredible. Uh, it really is uh, a big mental game. Yeah, well, in, in any game that has the intricacies that Pooh has, in other yeah. words, you gotta, you know, you got to be precise. you got to stay down. There's so many things that, that you got to keep going in, in line. In other words, you, 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 you just got to keep it going you know you got to keep your concentration yep. you got to keep your accuracy you got to shoot all kind of different shots finesse shots power shots and you know to yep. keep all of those together yeah, and, and you got to believe them consistently as well. you know yeah when you when you start to falter man you start questioning yourself yeah. and then you can't afford to do that especially at this level and yeah, then sometimes you make mistakes you don't understand why and then uh, then obviously you got to you you've got to you've got to sit there in that chair oh. Like Corey sitting in that chair now, thinking that's just cost me two games. I mean, it, it's just torture. It's like, uh, it's like, just there's nothing you can do in that chair. I mean, uh, but if you could, if you could sit in that chair after blundering and making careless mistakes and not even think about it, yeah, that's special. But oh, not yeah. too many can do that. No, yeah. yeah. not too many can do that. No, I know but, you have a problem with that. Oh, big time. Yeah. yeah. But the key is that when he comes back to the table, he's got to make sure he's mentally ready. Right. Well, I mean. You, you wouldn't be human if you're not upset sitting in the chair thinking, why have I done this? And I agree. And I'm, I mean, you know, yeah. I, and I'm not being generous. I do agree. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's correct. But you are right. I mean, there is some guys who's uh, better, better uh, for getting them mistakes than others. I'll probably say the best player in the you world. Know, but, Ralph Suquet was good with oh, that. Amazing. Wasn't that's, he? But I'll tell you who the best is, the temperament. Yeah. It's also Norman. What is he, a Japanese player, or what is he, Tajinoma? What is he? <laughs> well, he's sort of half, half Filipino, half German. Okay, oh, okay. Well, I don't know him. I don't know, you know. I don't you know, know. Torsten Holman? No, I don't know Torsten Holman. The German. Torsten Holman. Oh, Torsten Holman. Well, you've got to speak like an American for me to understand these things. Oh. <laughs> Torsten Holman. Of course I know yeah. Torsten. Yeah, his temperament's amazing. Even though he, he's not as... Talented in his ability as uh, most of these guys, but his temperament is what wins him a lot. Yeah, of he sure is. He's a very disciplined player. Oh, very yeah. disciplined player. His temperament's awesome. Yeah, right. I mean, all the all the good great players have got a good temperament, but some like myself. Yeah, I mean, like Earl some, Strickland, very good. Every temperament. now and again, I, I, I'll have like a, a little bit of a mini breakdown, uh, but uh, but that's life. I mean, uh, it just shows that we're all human sometimes. But ninety percent of the time, ninety nine percent of the time, I'm, uh, I, I, I'll uh, grind it out. I'd say about ninety seven. Yeah, ninety seven. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll take that. I thought you were going to say ninety. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, no, no, you've come a long way. You've come a long way, really, and I'm really proud of you too. By the way. Yes, yeah, so we've got a tricky, tricky layout here. So I'm the eight ball. I don't think passes the one ball, but I could be wrong. Well, then he's got to get rid of that 10 then. Yeah, and he really should be leaving the 15. Yeah, right? yeah, he would like to do that. I think Which, that you're, you're 100% correct. Yeah. yeah, the 15 is a much better ball to fall on the 8, providing that you have a nice key ball to fall on the 15. So, therefore, you know, he's worried about that 10 here. Yeah, so uh, the, maybe the maybe the eight passes the one ball, but it looks like he has to get really really good on the eight ball. I don't know. I think the eight. Yeah, I think the eight just may pass that one because for him to shoot that fifteen, that's an indication right there that yeah. the eight kind of like passes the one. I'm thinking. Yeah, well, I think there's two things here. If the eight ball doesn't pass the one ball, then he's going to take the ten ball now. He has to take the 10 ball now. But if the 8 ball passes the 1 ball, then he'll be leaving the 10 ball till the end. So this shot tells us that the 8 ball does pass the 1 ball. Because there's no way he'll be leaving that 10 ball. Right, exactly. Uh, you know, you want to get rid of that 10. Now he's going to shoot the 10 now. So maybe, maybe the 8 ball doesn't pass the 1 ball. Right? Because he wouldn't be playing... I would have left the 10 ball till last if the 8 ball passes the 1 ball. 
So I'm tell I'm guessing uh, the the uh, he's going to use the eleven and try and get he's going to try and draw up table to get shape on the eight ball to the top left where he's where he's uh, queuing from now. Yeah, I like cutting the eleven to your your yeah, left can do that, yeah. and going two cushions up table. Yeah, you can do that. Like also. go to go cut the eight eleven to the left and then go two cushions. I think he's got a pretty pretty straight on this, right? Yeah, he got a little bit of. Well, angle. we can follow it then. He can he's follow force it. it a little bit. He might be able to follow it in between the two six now, but I like going back and going two cushions out of the corner if he yeah. has that angle. Yeah, that would have been better. Yeah, he has that angle. He got a little steep on it though. Yeah, oh, watch out! Watch out! Watch out, know, watch out! Watch out! And he didn't watch out. See, he ended up with a bad angle on the eleven. It wasn't natural. Sometimes you end up with a nice natural angle yeah. where you can go two cushions comfortably out yeah. of that corner, lengthen it out coming on out of that corner. He didn't have that angle. No. He had, a, he had a force that hit her hard, and when you do that, you lose control of the cue ball more yeah. often yeah, than you sure. should. Sure. And even if it didn't scratch, he probably would have been snookered behind the seven ball. But that just tells you again about the table. If this was at the US Open, that wouldn't have scratched. Right. But on this table, there's no slide on the cue ball. There's but no don't you think we rail. should know that by now? Yeah, exactly. He knows <laughs> okay. that. Okay. <laughs> but that's why I, I really love this table, because it plays perfect. It plays the way the table's supposed to play. And uh, I'd like to take this table to the Moscone Cup, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you like this table to be at every tournament. It plays fair. It plays, it, plays, it plays the way the table should play. Because some, sometimes you play on, on television and it slides that much. The pockets play too big. And it's a bit too easy, you know what I mean? But this is just nice. The table plays fair. Watch Ooh, out, watch out. Good. You might have got lucky. That was careless. But I think he's, uh, uh, he can make a combo, but it's not something you want to be doing. But uh, he might even just lay the snooker here, Billy. Well, he's got to be careful there, too. Uh, this is not guaranteed to, to uh, put him behind the five here. Well, if he rolls it, it'll be okay, because the five will stop the seven, and then it'll just, but he's got to get speed right, like you say. Yeah, but he's looking yeah. at cutting the one ball, which I really don't like. Yeah, so the, the option that he has is to, like Darren said, is to roll softly into the five in hopes that you get him behind the five. You know, there's no guarantee that he'll be able to do that, but he certainly is the favorite to do it. Let's see how well... Well, the shot he's looking at he playing He thinks this out. If he's looking at playing the seven... Okay, he's going to play your ball, shot. He's going to try to hook him here. I think he's playing the combination. It's called the seven ball. I mean, that's unbelievable. Oh, okay. In other words, that's a great shot. But yeah. It, yeah. Well, you know, from our vantage point, sometimes it's difficult to determine exactly what type of an angle... Yeah. The uh, the no, ball is going to go ball. go at. That took a lot of balls to play off the seven ball. That was a he, he had no need to play that shot, but it was good. You know he really practices shots like that yeah. all the time. So therefore he's quite familiar with that type of yeah. a shot. So when you whenever you practice certain shots, you know some people feel that what's he practicing that shot for? Yeah, he's probably yeah. never going to come up, yeah, yeah. but it does come up occasionally. Yeah. And they, you know and then you get paid off for all that practice. Yeah. And he's actually a really good one-pocket player. So uh, yeah. he's good at these little cannons and these little caroms and uh, yeah. just, just putting the cue ball yes. like in a really good position. He's, he's really very smart. Very, player. very creative player. Yeah, you know, but Sometimes too creative. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sometimes too creative. But you know what? I think that that pays for itself because when you think like the end of those terms and you know, we were very creative – then you're able to get out in situations like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah sometimes it's benefits. You gotta be careful here, though. Ooh. Okay, this, this is this no is gimme not, here. This, this is no is, gimme. He's gonna shoot over the pocket. Yeah, I won't be. Uh, I won't be throwing the towel in for this one. This, this is, is be, This has got to keep your head still. This is the shots where you gotta keep your head still. If you move your head here, you'll miss it. Like that. And that's the second eight that he's that's missed. Exactly what happened. If you if you watch the stroke, he lifted his head up and he moved his shoulder to the to the to the left before he even got to the cue ball. Yeah, and that's nerves there because he knew he shouldn't have ended up where he ended up, and he allowed that to distract him. Yeah. Now you get up from a shot. You know what I mean? If you're not comfortable with the shot, which yeah. obviously he wasn't comfortable because he moved on the shot, yeah. get up from the shot, walk away from the table, yeah. you know, then regroup, get back to the table, and bear down, oh. and you'll pocket that ball more often. Okay, that was rack number 11. Now Van Boney has a one-game lead, six games to five. So this has been a very interesting match because, yeah. you know, they've both been very, very uh, 
you know, generous in this match. Let's take another look at that shot, Darren. Yeah, Cody said something to me. I don't know if he heard us in the comments. Here we go. Watch his uh, movement here. Yeah, he See, moved on it. And I saw his head come up before he, he, he contacted the cue ball. His yeah. head came up. On them type of shots, when you go like, it's like a little half ball cut off the rail, you've got to keep your head still. And that's exactly what you said prior to him hitting yeah. that shot. Yeah. You better um, keep your head down on this shot right here because that's the key. When you shoot shots like yeah. this, keep your head down. He did exactly opposite yeah. of what you suggested. He missed the eight ball. Game number 11 goes to uh, to a Corey, excuse That's me, to massive. Shane. Two big racks is giveaway there. Well, they both give each of a, a couple of racks, but right. Corey should have been taking advantage, and he hasn't. So now it's a big rack for him. Very important rack here. Oh, he's not going to get anything. Usually that's what happens when you do that. You come dry. Then you get the ultimate punishment. Right. This is when you sit. <laughs> this is the time when you go to your chair, you got to brush it off because now, you know, you made a blunder. You gave away a, a game that you should have won. That's a two-game swing, yeah. and you didn't pocket a ball in the break. There's a lot of negativity going on out uh, there for Corey. He's got to brush it off. Time, yeah. yeah, if Corey's not took his time out, he should try and look for one. Uh, try and take a... Try and change the momentum or something. Yeah, you can Shane's see that. Body you, language yeah, look at that. You, you see there's volcanic ash coming out of his nose yeah. right now. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> Whoa. He's burning up right now. And uh, Shane's body language is it's, it's like he's walking around the table a lot quicker now. He's, <laughs> he's, he's all happy again. Isn't that something? Yeah. Huh? Amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Huh? How you can get in stroke in the chair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah but it's like, like you say, you... you, you you, uh, your opponent's mistakes can give you confidence alone. Absolutely. You don't even need to play a shot sometimes. Absolutely. And now Shane, the killer that he is, is that Corey's weak right now. I'm going to jump on his butt right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, someone like Shane, he, he feeds off that, and he's thinking, well, uh, obviously he's had, his chance, he's had his chance here to, to beat me, let's say. And he's uh, not taking it, so I'm going I'm to punish him. And uh, that's what the, the great champions do. Exactly, and and that's the difference between the great champions and, 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 and the excellent players yeah. is that whenever you have an opportunity like this, when something is given to you, you make them pay for it. You know, that's when the real killer comes out. You make them pay for it, and that's how you become one of the best players in the world by consistently, you know, taking advantage of opportunities. And it looks like he's uh, fallen a little bit out of line. You know, you can recover here because you've you, you got a lot of different options here. So you can still recover here. Yeah, exactly. Both of the 15 and the 11 go down this end of the table. I mean, for me, he can play the, uh, the 10 in the side. Yeah. And then he can play the 15, is it? And then he can try and get on the... I mean, he can even leave the... He don't want to leave the nine ball till last because he believes no. in the wrong angle. Right. Well, because, well, and, and, and it's somewhat... Uh, if he can play the 10 and somehow play the nine next, great. But I don't think he can. No. But So he, he needs to play the 10, 15, 9. And then and then and then uh, get back over for the eleven, but he's left this a little bit trickier, very 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 tricky compared to where it should should right. have been. And this is he struck uh, that a little too hard too. Unless he can play the nine, or well, even then he, he he can't play the nine unless he plays it in the corner. If he can play the nine yeah. in a corner and draw back for the fifteen, then that's the shot. He because can't do that, but the fifteen doesn't pass. But the eleven it goes ball goes. Side. The fifteen goes in the side. If he can play the nine in the corner and draw back for the fifteen oh, in the side, no, I don't think so. I think he's gonna he's gonna draw to this side rail and play the eleven in the corner, and then the fifteen in the side. Okay, I believe. Yes, you're right. Why would I want to argue with you? No, I, mean, I, just, come uh, on. I mean, let me. Let me. I, I was the same. It, 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 it took me a while to see the sh to, 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 to see yeah. that shot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was definitely the correct way of going about this. Yeah. And I don't understand why he was so upset originally, because that was the right way to go anyway. Yeah, and you know, I hate it when my opponent gets upset when there's like 40 options available. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm saying to myself, which I shouldn't, but by the way. He could be doing that on a purpose. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah he, knows, he knows his opponent's down. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Already mentally, yeah, so he's yeah. just rubbing the salt in the that's wounds. That's good, that's good. I'm telling yeah. you, some of the no, guys, I know, no, I know how you think. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of the players do that. Yeah. A, a, li a little bit of gamesmanship, but in a nice way. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
It's like sticking yeah. it in and turning yeah. it, you know, because yeah, you're in the ear in the chair and you say, "I know what he's thinking about right yeah, now." Because it's happened to a, to, a, to to that person so many times. So he's thinking, right, it's time yeah. to get some uh, revenge. You know what I mean? Well, it looks like it's seven to five Van Boning now. All of a sudden, yeah, you know, he has a two game lead in the match. Look at Duel in the chair. He's talking to himself now, yeah. and it's understandable. It's yeah, understandable. Yeah, you gave that now. game away. You came out drying the break, and now Van Boning is like. Giving it to you, you know, with yeah. all the stalling out there. Yeah. I got you, Corey. You know, I can feel for you. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. And even more tough because you're thinking, why like, he's praying to get back to the table now. Uh -huh. And this is a problem with Paul. Well, why it's so tough mentally because you're thinking, please don't break and run. Because <laughs> if he goes at 8-5, then you're in big trouble. Especially right. We, we all we all turn up break eight five. This oh, this rack is the match. Time. When you take a three game lead this late in the match, yeah, oh the my. way he breaks. Oh my, the way he breaks. How are you going to surmount that? And uh, but seven six, and then you're breaking. Then you're back in the game. Right. But if Shane wins this rack, then uh, I think it's just about. It's not over, but. Uh, He's a massive favorite. And don't you think he doesn't know that Van oh, yeah. Boney? He knows that. He I knows this is a big game for him. They both know it. Yeah. <laughs> but what I'm saying is it's because you have a two game lead, there's no reason to get to get, you oh, know yeah. careless Open or uncomfortable. Wow. You know, yeah, you've got to sure. bear down. But he didn't pocket a ball on the break, and that's one of the rare times yeah. Van Boning didn't pocket a ball yeah, on the break. The first time I've seen Quote Dry since uh, two thousand and eight. And this is a must win for Corey right here. He has to get out here. Oh, this is massive. Must win for him. He and doesn't get out here. Big time problems for him in the in the future here. And, big time. Uh, and also, when things aren't going great for you, the layouts are always a little bit more tricky. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You're right. So the stripes are not yeah. nice because because the, the 15 ball doesn't pass the two. This the stripe behind the six ball doesn't go anywhere. And solids are not easy because you don't have like. Uh, I mean, I don't think the six ball passes. I kind of I kind of like the stripes because the thirteen or the twelve ball here. You got the carom twelve ball into the six to open up the thirteen. You have that. Yeah. I kind of like the yeah, but stripes. The fifteen ball doesn't go. Where's the fifteen ball going? Well, fifteen passes the one. Oh wow, he should have took stripes. On. I like the stripes there. He took the solids. Passes, he should have took stripes. Oh yeah, he took the solids and let's see what he has in mind here because, like Darren said, now that six ball. You know, even though there are. Two balls around the six, the three, and the five. Yeah, but not natural. They're not natural to bump the six. No, they're not. You have to get a little creative here. You have to get perfect shape on the three, for example. You'd have to get perfect angle on the free ball to kiss the yeah. uh, the six on the right. The stripe. Yeah, you have so to get really. You have to go get an angle to follow through the three. The five is not a terrible ball to use a six, but it would have it would have been okay if the nine ball wasn't in the way, and then he could have played the six in the top because that eleven ball makes it a big pocket. But the nine ball is a blocker for that pocket for the six. Right. But his cue ball is very good, so I expect him to get the break open the six. I'd be shocked if he doesn't leave a, the correct angle. Uh, but yeah, obviously he's not feeling so great. But he, he knows he's still in the game because this is a big game, so he's he's really. Well, for him, Darren, for him to opt to take the solids as, a, 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 instead of the stripes it tells me that he has to have a plan here. I don't know if he has the angle to, to, to uh, bump the six here. Let's I see if he does. Perfect, really. This was a problem, though. That's the problem. Now he's got a big problem here. See, now he can't That's shoot dead. the five. He can't shoot the six. And the seven, oh, my. There's I don't no even way. think he has a pocket for the seven. He doesn't have a pocket for the seven. The, the, only thing he's got, the only shot he's got here is a kick on the six ball. So, therefore, he really didn't, uh, you know, if you're going to shoot that shot, don't you have to safeguard against this happening? You have to hit it with a stroke. But he played that very quickly as well. Yeah, like it was a hanger. <laughs> like, oh, I'm going to get out now. Yeah, boom, boom. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a little bit carelessly, carelessness there. That I think he was a little careless there. Yeah, he sort of, uh, this is this is do or die, this shot. This is uh, the match for me, this shot right here. Well, you can stick a fork in him now. He had to get out there. He he trails by two games, and I'd be really surprised to see Van Boning not get out here. Yeah, and it also as a fellow professional, it's sort of uh, it's not easy to watch when this thing when 
it's not easy to watch a fellow professional really go through this type of emotion. No, he had to. He, he knows yeah. he's had opportunities in this yeah, match. Wow. Yeah, I mean, he, he's, he's going to be losing 8-5. It could, yeah. could easily be winning 8-5. Eight, eight, After missing that eight ball, it's all it yeah. went all downhill. It's amazing. He didn't make a ball on the break. He had another opportunity, which he should have made good yeah. with. He didn't do that. Yeah. I don't I don't expect him to... Uh, to create any more noise for the rest of the match here, I don't. I don't think so. You know, yeah, especially against uh, this break, and uh, Shane's playing confidently now. As yeah, well. if he can gather himself enough to uh, start playing a lot better, and then of course Shane well, has Collier to get a little. playing great up to five four, and then as soon as he missed that ball, the game just turned. And uh, that's and Shane just uh, he's uh, he's all happy. Uh, he, he, I don't think he, he, he probably can't believe how, how easy the game is now. Huh? <laughs> I mean, 20 minutes ago, he's like uh, thinking, oh, this is going to be a tough night. Yeah. Now he's sort of getting like easy opportunities when he's coming to the table because uh, most most of the balls have disappeared. Yeah, he wanted to play shape for the 10. He didn't uh, fall too much out of line on the 10, but he wanted to get straight in on the 10. And if he would have done that... Yeah. I think that this rack would have been quite well, easy. I would never even play the 10 ball here. I'd be playing the 11 and ball over the pocket. I, I don't want to take a... Because uh, these, these can be missed. I mean, uh, anything can happen. I, I, I like to make sure the ball's all missable. Yeah, I figured he was going to draw back for the 11. and he, Because that type of a stroke with the speed that he hit it with yeah. sort of like increases the accuracy of the shot yeah, somewhat. Yeah, he's uh, feeling good anyway. So. Yeah. He has an opportunity to let his stroke out a little bit, hit it with the with the speed that he uh, he's quite comfortable hitting balls with, and that's exactly what that shot offered him. So therefore, he's back in line again. Mm. He leads by two games. This game is probably history. But what I will say though is that he's he's obviously made a few mistakes himself, but he's sort of struggled a little bit with a cue ball in this match. So he'll be looking to improve his yeah. cue ball control because his yeah. patterns haven't been great in this particular game. Match, sorry. Sort of chasing the cue ball a little bit. But, uh, Corey, uh, 8-5 eight, eight, now. Yeah, 8-5 Van Boning, and, uh, you know, Corey's, uh, not really feeling too good right now. You know, after missing that 8, uh, a couple bad things happened to him, and then he ended up uh, hooking himself in, in the last game. So, therefore, a lot of problems out there in terms of the way he's thinking right now. Yeah, and it's even tougher when you've already played the game today and lost. So then you got you you got you playing the last match tonight, and obviously he's playing shame and boning. So he's yeah, Shane's won uh, seven out of the last nine racks. So, right, uh, big swing here, and uh, uh, actually Carly's broke good in this match. Uh, can't blame the break. Uh, he's made balls on all his breaks. You know, this was a very competitive match up until where he missed that eight. Yeah, but it's still very not over. Tough. I mean, let's not write him off completely. Let's not do that. Yeah, too good a player to do that. But he needs some help. There's the eight, there's oh, the wow. eight, there's the eight. And there's that one time in the tournament that the eight goes yeah. off the break. Maybe he has something. Maybe he has got but some Yeah, maybe he's, he's doing the right thing by using that side break. And, uh... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I just said he needs some help, and he just got it. And, and so, sometimes a little bit of help like that yeah. can, you you know, it can yes. revitalize you. Yeah, you know, like hey, a, maybe I do have a, maybe the pool guards are all on my side. <laughs> yeah, oh, and like yeah. now it's 8-6, right? Yeah. It's Shane's yeah. break. If he yeah. can somehow win this break, get to 8-7 and, and get back on serve. And then get a break, yeah. yeah. And make the 8 again, it'll be 8 apiece. Well, what happens if it's 9-9? 9-9, nine, nine, yeah. uh, nine, nine, what, what happens there? Uh, Shane, Shane, Shane will break, right, if it goes 9-9. Nine, nine. Uh, Shane's break on the evens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean that, just something like that can... Yeah, let's see that replay. They ball on the break, yeah. And this is why uh, dual, one of the reasons why Duel goes to the, uh, the side break. Boom. Because he goes across, that cut break, yeah. goes across, it gives the eight more action, and, uh, you know, that time it paid off for him. Yeah, but Shane, is it a fair trade-off? Shane does the same with a nine ball. When he plays with a nine ball in the spot, he plays that cut break so that the cue ball comes back into the stack, and it's the nine ball. And at the U.S. Open, he made about seven or eight nine balls on the break. Let's take a look at the stripes. Look at all the all the solids are this end of the table. All the stripes on this end of the table. Yeah, I uh, don't know how that happened. And he's got absolute beautiful laid table. I mean, you can if, if the ten ball, uh, everything goes here, so it's perfect. And uh, he knows it. 
That's the the 13 passes the four, which it does. And then they'll play the 10 and the 14, is it, into the uh, bottom right, opposite corner pocket. So he is a pretty nice late table. They'll even leave the 15 for his last ball here, Billy. Should play the... He was supposed to play for the nine ball there. Yeah, Unless the 10 ball does go. If, if the 10 ball goes, then, then it, it doesn't matter, which it does, obviously. Yeah, but he wants to clear this 13 and 14. Uh, this makes a difference. I didn't realize the 10 ball goes there. I think he's played for the 15 there. Well, if he did, he well, he didn't do it that well. Well, for me, that was a wrong shot. Now he's got to play the nine. He's okay. He kind of leave that. Yeah, he's leave walking the around the ball, table yeah. like he lost. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's another thing. Yeah. Well, that would burn me up, boy. Well, he has struggled with the cue ball this match. His cue ball control's really been uh, slightly off. Yeah, I think that uh, it has more to do with him right now than it does with Corey, the way he's looking at the table. Yeah. You know, because he's really disappointed in, in his inability to do what he wants to do. He's but he's, but uh, in spite of that, I think he's still getting out. Yeah, I'd be amazed if he don't leave the 15 ball till the end. He's going to do. Which is perfect shape for the 8 ball. Even if he lands straight on it, he's okay. Leaves a slight angle, perfect. Yeah, slight angle would be ideal. Well, he's straight. Now, this is where he didn't want to get. He didn't want to get straight, so now he's going to have to take a longer shot on the 8. Yeah, he'll just stop it, bring it. Bring the cue ball back maybe two inches. He's okay. Ooh! Uh-oh. Uh-oh, he moved. Now, this is a chance for Corey now. Made the eight in the break, eight to six. He can hope that uh, for some somehow, some way, he can win this game on Van Boning's break. It's eight to seven. Now, he'll be breaking to tie up the match at eight apiece. Yeah. So, therefore, you had it all planned out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what amazed me there is that he moved on that shot also. Yeah, he right? did. He but sure it, did. But it looked like he tried to he tried to uh, steal. That, that, that's a terrible shot. Yeah, now you can't really play safe here because the 15's too close to the pocket. But you can't play the six ball because that's just too hard. Yeah, so well, what do you do here? I mean, you don't. if you're going to play a safe, you've got to take away that long reel for the kick. You can't allow core, uh, You can't allow Van Boning to kick the at Karen. the 15. I like the Karen. I mean, the uh, five onto the one ball and sort of play it as a two-way shot. Because if you, if you don't make the ball, you leave it over the pocket, right? There you go. Because the, the good thing there is that if he doesn't make it, he leaves a one ball over the, over the corner, so Shane can't bank the 15. He can't go up and down easily because the, good. Fifth, the seven's in the way. Very good. So, therefore, he blocked the pocket with the one for the bank. And he showed his cannon He blocked skills. the kick with the seven as far as kicking the 15 in. So, therefore, that was a really intelligent shot. Again. Which you analyzed perfectly. I mean, I thought that was really good. Yeah. First time tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but Shane, I can't believe how much he moved on that 15 ball. Yeah, but he sure secondly, did. He sure did. You're secondly, right. I think he tried to, to to pinch a little bit of the pocket, which he can't do on this table. Yeah, he was kind of like upset and disappointed yeah. that he didn't get a nice little angle on the, on the 15. Yeah. But you know what? That's not a reason for him to shoot and hit that 15 the way that he did. No, he tried to be a little bit greedy, I think, because uh, he didn't want to leave the cue ball near the side rail and make the eight ball a bit more tougher. But he should have taken his medicine and took a slightly tougher eight ball. That's the key of this game. Sometimes mm -hmm. you've got to take what the table gives you and don't try and be greedy. Yeah, he's going to come back a little bit and play the seven in the opposite corner. I do believe it. But, of course, he can go forward, too, if he, if he doesn't like uh, coming back. Or is a type of guy that goes forward. Wow, what a turnaround. This game's been unbelievable. But this this is where I love pull because we've seen everything. Yeah. Uh, the emotions, the highs, the lows. It's in the, the great play, some bad play, some uh, unexpected uh -huh. misses. We've seen some great shots. And if you got anything out of this match, you got never give up because yeah. you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. This is game number 15. Duel now only trails by one game in the match, eight games to seven. He's, he has a, you know, an excellent chance to win this match where a couple yeah. a couple games ago we thought it was hopeless. Yeah, Just so never he, give up. Yeah, even he thought it was hopeless. Uh, he's still not too happy about the situation, but he's smiling a little bit, thinking, well, I'm somehow back in this game. So do you think he feels a little bit different now than he did about three games ago? Yeah, now he's like, he's sort of, <laughs> now he's thinking that he's sort of 
slowly forgetting his mistakes now. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at Van Boning in the chair. Can we can we take a look at Van Boning in the yeah, chair? Can we get a camera? Just to see if see what he's uh, please someone uh, someone give us give us a shot on Van Boning in the yeah, chair. Can we do that? There he is. There you go. Look, so. uh, he looks a little concerned, but not overly, but a little concerned. He still leads in the match 8-7, to seven, but he certainly doesn't like what transpired in the last game or two. Yeah. Eight ball on the break, and then he missed a golden opportunity to get back to within, th uh, within three games, you know. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, just... Uh now, he's not really thinking that great right now. He's a little concerned. No, he's, like, he's just trying to figure out why. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, okay, all right, here we go. Back in action. Referee, Back in action. Yeah. Referee. <laughs> the cut break. Ooh. Let's take a look at the cue oh, ball. He, made, he made a solid. He got lucky there, Billy. Very quickly. Well, lucky, good news, bad news. He's got a yeah. tough first shot. <laughs> yeah, good news is he is, is he didn't scratch. Yeah. That's yeah, the good yeah. news. But the, uh, the solids, it's just a horrible color. Yeah. And especially after some of the misses we've yeah. seen. The solids is a horrible color. You and know. Also, he knows that this rack is huge. Yeah. And he, but and if, the, there's no way he's going to get out this rack. And uh, the bad I, news here is that I, even if he makes his first shot, Good luck with the rest of the table. No, I, I wouldn't even try to get out this rack. He's got yeah, he multiple problems in this rack. I think he should be playing safe. To be yeah, he shouldn't even try to get out this rack. This is a nice test of cue in, though. Missed it. So it moved again on the shot. There. Now, I, you know what? Well, you know, it wouldn't be. That's, <laughs> I, it might I, be a good miss. Right now. No, the he thing can is, shoot. his stripes are in play now. Yeah, he can shoot the 11 and break that 15 out of there right now. Yeah, that was a bad miss because stripes are in play. Yeah, he's gonna try. He's gonna have to deal with that fifteen at some point, and now, is, do it now. is probably a good a time as, it's 11 as any. Perfect. Yeah, he's got a nice angle on that eleven to go into that fifteen. Now he's got the twelve at the other end of the t yeah. the uh, other end of the table and the fourteen up yeah. there. So therefore, you know. Yeah, he's is is more chance of being on a ball after breaking this open, and he hasn't. Yeah, good gamble here. Good gamble going into the ball now. You gotta work your percentages there. But sometimes you gotta take a little bit of a risk. You can't play perfect all the time. You gotta uh, rely on a little a little bit of a roll. He's got a shot on the fifteen. It's not the shot that he wanted. It's a shot. Oh, he's very happy to be at the table, I know that. Mm-hmm. Now this shot here is, is very missable too, by the way. Well now the eight balls, uh if you don't play the pattern great, the eight ball could be a problem. Also. And these this uh I think the nine ball passes the four ball in the side pocket. That makes this rack a little easier. But he's got some work to do. It's not straightforward. And this is missable after what we've seen. This is very missable. There you go. Very missable. This table. Very missable, missable shot. I, he jumped up a little bit there too. Yeah. That shot was very missable. And, he, and what? This is Corey's chance. This is Corey's chance to tie up the match. He'll have the momentum. Even though, even though he'll be at a disadvantage because of the breaking aspect of, of, of the manner of the match but he'll have the momentum oh yeah. if he wins this rack I'd be absolutely delighted but the problem you got here the six ball's not good um, nor the don't two I think the two ball goes so he's mm. lots of work to do uh, I'd love to see if the two ball would go I don't think the two goes no that's why he's going to break it open here he's going to make the seven draw just miss a ten come off the bottom rail kiss the thirteen or the two and that should uh, open the two ball up but just needs a bit of luck to get a shot and uh, this nice. is pretty really good. That's nice. And now he has the two ball in position to maybe to play position off wow. the two to the six some way. Oh, I think he can play the one ball now and come off the top rail and kiss the six. Or, do, or even play for the six in the corner. Or even, kiss the, eight ball. Or even kiss the 12 with the cue ball. I think he can play this for the six in the corner. I'm pretty sure it's a perfect angle there. I don't know. Let's see. He's going he's gonna to wow, move I something. I can't believe what he's done here. He's going to try to move that. something. Oh, Billy. He should have just played that. Pocket speed and play for the six in the bottom right hand corner. You definitely have a point there. But of course, you see those shots because of your ability to control the cue ball so well. In other words, that seems to be yum yum for you. Well, uh, you know. For me, I don't like kissing balls unless I have to kiss balls. If, if I can play to get on the ball, I'd rather play to get on the ball. But uh, he, he didn't even look to see if the six ball passed the eight ball, which it did do. It probably doesn't now because he kissed the eight ball, but before it did. 
So now he's got he's putting all his eggs in one basket now. And now, right, like you say, I don't even know if the six passes because the exactly. eight's in the way. And that's what I'm saying. Uh, now he's in a bad spot. He needs to get perfect on this four ball or something. He's putting all his eggs on in the basket here, getting shape on that six ball. Well, now you know what? He's going to send the cue ball toward the uh, the 12 down there off that bottom rail. I think he's got too much angle, Billy. You know, to, get, to go off that bottom rail? Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. It's gonna, uh, I'm talking about going this way with the cue ball and then, bumping, and then bumping this ball. I think he's got too much angle. Right? We'll find out. I think he's, I think he's in trouble here. Yeah, he did. He had too much angle. He tried to bump something, yeah, but he did. Too, too much angle. <laughs> too much angle was right. You couldn't follow through the ball because of of the the uh, steepness of the cut. Yeah. So now he's really got a problem. What do you do here? You got to uh, bank it one cushion. Bank it. Uh, one bank cushion it the, the wrong way. You have to go right back. You've got to go long, long bank. Right well, that's side. right. He doesn't have the cross corner bank. He's got the right back bank to the pocket on his left. I think if you're playing bank pool, you think, oh, maybe he might make this. But eight, eight ball, you, it, they, they look a lot tougher playing eight ball, and uh, especially... I don't think he has the cross corner bank, do you? I think he's. Uh, I just can't believe that he didn't play for the six in the corner when he had a chance. It's uh, disappointing. Yeah, he's. He had an excellent opportunity to uh, tie up this match, but of course it's not over yet. Let's see what he does. He's going cross corner, wow. so he thinks he has the angle to. Maybe he's playing it off the twelve. <laughs> I don't know about that. Oh, he's caught a jewel. You never know. <laughs> I'm telling you, watch. He's going to, he's having to put a lot of inside English. Wow, this is unbelievable if this goes. Oh, my goodness. I thought he hit it good when he hit it, you know. Uh, on a slidey table, that might have gone. But he missed a, he missed a trick there. Oh, yeah, he's what really, a load of twist and he's turns really beside himself now. He just pounded the cue on the, on the carpet, and uh, he knows he had an excellent opportunity. And that's not often that this guy at the table gives you this many gifts and opportunities and you know when he does and if you don't take advantage of it yeah. you really really feel bad as you walk to the well, to mean, your uh, chair Rodney Rodney let Shane off the hook also right yeah so Missed Shane the... had been, been let off the hook twice today and I think he'd be happily admit it also so day number one has been really an eventful day if I had to give you uh, yeah Shane will be know. the happiest guy in the in the old field thinking I played what he hasn't played nowhere near his best, right? Oh, yeah, and he's and too he's, old. He's going to be two, uh, zero, uh, two, two, I think two, the zero. happiest guy in the whole field should be you and, and Shaw. Because even though you only played one match yeah, today, it it's how you played. Yeah. I think that's uh, more important than playing two ugly matches and winning. Yeah, well, I'd rather play one good match and playing good. We'll see on some win. But... Uh, but tomorrow's another day. That's 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 the thing with Paul. I mean, he hasn't played bad in this match. He's, he's missed maybe three balls. What we might only see him miss uh, once in the old tournament. Uh, so he's been very careless. But Corey's obviously distraught because he's had plenty of chances here. This was a great opportunity for Corey. Well, let's uh, not throw the dirt over him too quickly here. Well, we we, we yes. it's going to be nine seven. Nine, seven. Van Boning and then Duel still has life. Yeah, but the problem you've got now is that Shane's got two, uh, the three racks to play. He's got two breaks out the last three, so that's key, I think. Right. It's, it's, it's absolutely... You know he's going to get one opportunity, at least. Yeah, and uh, this is a game that Corey must... Of course, he wants to win three in a row. This is the game he must win. Well, he but needs it to starts with this game, game yeah. right here. Then he, make, then he needs to make the eight ball on the break again. This is a big game. This will give him a lot of energy if he has to win, if he happens to win this game, Corey, that is, because he'll have the break in the next game. Yeah. And then when you go hill, hill, you know, that break doesn't seem to be as big because it's a little bit, the nerves start taking well, over then. Sometimes when it's hill, hill, you, you don't want to break. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The nerves start taking over a little bit then, you know what I mean? Hill, hill, anything can happen. It's flip a coin sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I like, I like my opponent to go first, especially playing eight ball, yeah. because if he misses his second last ball the tails are nice and easy the tails really but easy that don't ever happen <laughs> not very rarely no 
Wow. Okay, no, did no nothing, ball. Yeah, nothing yet. Nothing wow. yet. Wow, That's this is incredible. something here. Now, this is the start. This is the start. Corey's getting out of his chair. He didn't even figure to get out of his chair. I don't think he can believe he's getting this. Man, no. I can't believe I've seen Shane, I've seen Shane uh, come up dry twice in a row. No, I think that must I, be the first it, time I've seen that for a long time. Now, if I were Corey, I would take another walk around the table to make sure I gather myself because yeah. he wasn't feeling really good. Yeah, I think you should walk around three times just <laughs> to make sure he's still alive. <laughs> 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 oh, my. <laughs> you're, 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 that's not right. Come on, come on. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you've got to do that. When you're feeling numb and you're down, you've you got to just keep walking around a few times just to, yeah, that means just to get your ba- bearings. Take a bathroom break. <laughs> Is yeah, this really, that is this really happening? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Uh, we're in action. Plus now he's got to think straight. This is uh, your last chance here. You know, any blunder here on out, and it's history for you, pal. Because you have to make sure you get out here. And I understand there's no guarantee getting out, but you got to give it your best effort right now. Yeah, I was going to say this is a really nice laid looking easy rack but after what we've seen I'm, uh, I don't want to call anything that's the two ball passes the one ball so that's great so everything's really stop yeah. stop stop but uh, yeah, he should play you, for the two right here gotta make sure he leaves the key ball the one ball should be the last ball for the eight ball play for the two here get attack that ball now yeah, yeah I, would, I don't like this well he's okay he right wanted on. to get straight, but it's, it's not perfect. He, he missed a shot. He missed a shot before, Billy. Yeah, <laughs> about four or five rucks ago. Yeah, similar the angle. Eight ball. It was the eight ball. Similar he, angle. He hit it into the rail. So you know if this goes into the rail, it's not going to drop. So he's got to really keep still this time. He might have to go into the eight with the cue ball here. Yeah, that's okay. He's got to keep still like this. Shot first. He missed the eight. I thought he was going to go into the eight. Yeah, that was beautiful. Yeah, nicely struck because that was a big shot for him. Now I'm certainly sure he feels a lot better about... Well, it's still a bit of work to do because this should have been the last ball for the eight ball. You're right. So he's got to get perfect on the six now. Otherwise, it might be difficult for him to get on the eight ball. Yeah, because now he has to get he has to hit the rail and then go for the three. Easy. And I think he's too straight to do that. Just okay, Billy. He can just roll it through, I think. He can just miss the... He might 15. force it between the two balls there. Maybe. See, so he's got wrong angle on the ball. So yeah. Now he's tricky. now he's got a problem here. He may have to bump the ten and take a nice cut on the eight. Yep. He doesn't want to go into the ten, but I think he's going to be forced to do that. Yep. And this is all down to not playing the correct pattern. Wow. No, this is a very tough shot for the eight. Oh, I can't believe he didn't draw into the ten ball. Yeah, I, I, I like drawing into the ten too. Well, what's the odds of him making this one? No, he's gonna. He's he's taking a look at a shot that's I maybe mean, he, two football him. fields away here. Yeah, this is a tough shot after what he's missed in this match. Wow! Nice shot. All right, we have life here at the game number seventeen. Duel only trails by one game in the match, nine games to eight, and he'll be at the table to open up the yeah. balls. Oh, we're back in. That, yeah. That was pretty impressive. We're back in action here. Yeah, huh? The eight ball was very impressive after some of the yeah. things he's done in this match. After some of, he's missed two easy eight balls, so that was a uh, that was a stay in the match there. Right there. And when your confidence is really low, them shots are uh, uh, tougher than what they've ever been. Yeah, they're definitely confident, confidence builders when you, whenever you pocket a ball like that in that type of oh, a situation. A confidence saver. Yeah. Oh, just, uh, just, now he's just fighting for his life, really. Just praying that he gets a ball on the break and praying he gets a nice, easy layout. And That's ask, a lot of praying, man. <laughs> ask Shane the question. That's a key. All, all he's hoping for now is to get to the hill and just uh, open. Uh, ask, ask Shane the question, Neil. It, it's 9-9. Nine, nine, it's your break. If you break and run. <laughs> and uh, you win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Big break here. Billy's made a ball on every break so far. They make it nine out of nine. What's the eight? Drew the ball. It slightly miss hit it. A lot of congestion out, out there. This is not going to be an easy rack. He made the wrong balls. He made a stripe, and like Darren said, he made the wrong color. He doesn't even have a shot. He has he has maybe a quarter of a pocket with the 10. Not much of a pocket at all. He's taking a look at it now. Yeah, he's got a little bit less than half a pocket, and I don't think the 12 passes the... No, it does pass. Sorry, the 12 does pass the 8 ball, so I think that's going to be the... Uh, this is tough. 
And he can't even play a safety here. He tried the uh, 12. If that's past the 8 into the upper left, excuse me, the lower left-hand pocket. That's the ball he's shooting. Okay, this well, is he stays a, on stripes no matter what. So that's why he should play the 12 in the corner, but play pocket speed. So if he does miss it, he might get it over the pocket, and that could be massive in this rack. It's it, 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 to tie a lot of balls up. If he he stays, made it. He right made shot. it. But you like, I like the speed he played it, Billy, because if he stays near the pocket, he's still favourite in this game. Because that would have blocked a lot of balls going in that pocket. So that was a really smart shot. And to be fair, I think he's been very unfortunate. It was a better executed shot than it was smart. <laughs> if you yeah, could yeah. look at it that way. Yeah. Because that was a must pocket ball well, there. Yeah, did you play like a little snooker here? Just fin the 10 and put him behind the... Uh, and you could do that, but I don't think he should. I think that he's got a good enough shot to get out here. The 14 passes the 8. You know, that ball goes. The 15's in the open. The 11's a little bit hidden, but I think he can get to that ball at some point. Yeah. I think he's got to go for the win right now. So you're saying play the caramel? Yeah, no, it's a combination. Yeah, the combination? Yeah. Wow. Well, where's the cue ball going? And the he's going to kill it. Kill it? Wow, look at this. Well, he's, shot, he's got a problem here. He can't goes, make the right? 14. The 15's a tricky shot. No, he's good. He can play the 15, play for the 10 on the bottom rail, leave a little angle, then come up for the 11 in the side pocket, pass the 5, and straight in on the 14. Yeah, you're pretty quick with all these plays, but of course, uh, that's what I like <laughs> about you. <laughs> yeah. That's the best pattern I see right yeah. now. Yeah. He'll increase the accuracy of the shot if he plays position for the 10, like Darren said, off the 15. Yeah. You know, you don't want to try to finesse the 10 because if you do that, you take a little accuracy away from Whatever the shot. Whatever you do, don't play for the 11 ball now. Sure. No, to play for the 10 now. And like Darren said, after playing for the 10, then go up for the 11 and you'll be right there for the 14. Yeah, because now he can let his stroke out a little bit on the 15 because right. it's a little tricky. You don't right, want to be yeah. like trying to work this perfect to get on right. the 11 now. There you go. There you That's go. Too hard, though. That's too hard. A touch too hard. It should be okay, but this is a little touch. It's a little hard. Now, now he has to put a little inside on it. Yeah, I don't like this. I don't like this shot when you have to put table, a little I inside. Like oh, I don't know what he's doing. Here. What's he doing with the cue ball? Oh. Wow, he went for the 14. He said, I'm not taking any chances. Wow. He went for the 14. Now he's still not out because, you know, when you play for the 14 and comp as opposed to playing for the 11, now you got to play position again. And if you don't have a good angle on the 14, then you have a problem. you got an angle. You should play for the 11 in this corner pocket. He's got, ooh, I thought he skid on him there. He played that great. Now he's going for the side? Yeah, he's going for the side, but he, uh, he's going to come up. Yeah, it's perfect. He actually, I, f I, f I thought the ball skid on him there, but maybe it did, but it, it helped him in this situation. Wow, look at this. He's going to get out here, Darren. And we're going to see Hill Hill, nine games wow. apiece with Van Boning breaking. You know, there's been a lot of swings here, a lot wow. of emotional problems for both players Sorry. at some point in time during this match. Oh, wow. And we've, it, it's come down to Hill Hill. Hey, you can't believe it. So this is what figured to happen. We knew it was going to be a close match. <laughs> I think on reflection, it's <laughs> probably the right thing. What's happened? Yeah. I mean, uh, they both made some unbelievable mistakes, and they both played some good stuff. And uh, probably deserves to be 9-9. Yeah, this is pretty interesting uh, here. Pretty exciting stuff, by the way. And we must note also that Shane's last two breaks has come dry. Yeah, and that's not often that uh, he, he does come up dry on the break. And he'll know that, so he'll be taking extra care. We always racking these balls. Sometimes when you, when you come up dry on the break, you try to put a little more velocity and power yeah. into the break. And what happens then? What happens? Yeah, you... you uh, you scratch. You lose the cue ball, that's you right. You lose the cue ball. Yeah, you lose the cue ball, you know. And so but listen. Shane with them guys, what well, he can't hit a medium speed break. He has to hit them at his own power break because mm -hmm. he's got a long winding swing. He, he he has to hit the same speed all the time. And he practices the break. Let's see if it pays off. What a weapon, huh? Well, he made a ball. Made another one. Now he's got choice. Make, making that second ball. I just want to see a well, tricky no, He finish. made two stripes. He's forced to take the stripes here. Wow. Well, I just want to see a tricky out. Well, the 11 ball is hidden behind the 7 and the 5, so therefore, so therefore that's a problem. But the thing is, though, is that it does go, though, Billy. Pardon and, me? Uh, it does go. Between, I mean, the 11 goes in the corner. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of room there. And the 13 also passes a 3. Mm. What do you think do here? Do you shoot the 12 and maybe go into the 7 with the cue ball here? Uh, no, I mean, he can play for the side rail, I think. 
Can he, if he can play with the side rail, yeah, I agree. Draw for the side rail if he can. But if he has too much of an angle to do that, because he's going to have to hit it with a little bit of a stroke here. Yeah. He's going to uh, increase the speed of this shot when doing that. So he might go into the seven here. Yeah, maybe. But if he gets on it, he's pretty, oh, wow. Wow, he terrible. butchered that shot. He had a right. I mean, he, he butchered his, it. He dropped his shoulder very quickly on that one, Billy. He dropped his shoulder. He really butchered that shot. So now, now Duel has an opportunity to uh, cash in here. The question here, though, Billy, does the one ball pass the two ball? That's the key. Yeah. That is the key. Good call, too, by the way. Wow. Shane's it about four balls into that rail. I mean, he really butchered that shot. It yeah, wasn't but, even close. Yeah, I mean, that was a little tweak. Uh, well, what do you, how, how do you explain that? How do you explain uh, how mm. poorly you hit a you hit a important shot like that? Not really. Just... Uh... Uh, we're all human, I guess, and just shows you that we all do suffer from pressure sometimes. So, for, so, yeah. so to the all the all the amateurs out there, I mean, uh, we all we're all human. I mean, we all do uh, feel the pressure sometimes. He's going to get rid of the six next here. Yeah. Let's take a look at that shot, the Van Boning shot. Watch it over here yeah, in the monitor here. Off the shot very quickly. There you go. It's that little tweak on wow, his shoulder. Wow, he hit the diamond. Yeah, did you just come across it with your shoulder. Wow. Just a little bit. Just be, maybe put a bit more English on the cue ball also than he, he wants I think the one passes it too. I think what yeah. he's going to do is he's going to play the six, with the leave himself an angle on the three to go cross table for the one and go toward the 15 with the cue ball. Yeah, I'd love one of the guys in the crowd to tell me if that one ball passes the two. Yeah. I'm sure it does pass the two. We've just got two. confirmation that the one ball does pass the two. Yeah, he's going to play shape on the three to go cross table with the cue ball toward the 15 yeah. and end up with a shot on the one. And shoot it past the two. Oh, he's drawing back. He's going to draw back now? This is tough here. Look, this is tough. Well, that's not right. I don't like what he did there. No. I think he made a big mistake there. Oh, big time. Now, all the eggs are going to be in one basket again, Billy. Yeah, and he's got to get the angle to get there, too. Wow, good luck. You know, and how do you do it from here? Well, the five is any ball I can see. I can get on it now. But uh, I, don't, I don't understand what he's done there. I mean, he, he could have just, I mean, there he could have, there's lots of things he could have done. I thought he could have shot the six in, played shape on the three to hit the rail in between the five and 11 to go cross table. Yeah, or he could have even used the five to get there. But this is a nice plane to get on it now. Wow, what a shot. Wow, what a traditional shot that is. Yeah, oh, nice I'm, shot. I'm serious, that's uh, a yeah. hell of a shot that is. That's a lot tougher than what it looked. That was yeah. impressive. But yeah, this is a big shot right now. Yeah, he had to hit that shot really accurately to get he the action killed, that he did. Just kill the cue ball. That's what, what he's doing. Shot. That's what he's this doing. Is a tough shot if he's going to kill it. Ah, uh, nice stroke. Got a nice kiss as well, there, guys. I don't think he can pocket the three here. What do you mean he can't pocket the three? The three? No, he. I oh, think no, he's that's going to be his last ball. He got a perfect kiss there. That kiss he got is going to help him get on the eight ball. It helps him to stay on the five ball. I mean, it, that kiss was perfect. He couldn't have uh, put that cue ball any better, really. He got quite fortunate with a kiss, actually. And now he's going to draw two cushions here. I like going past. I like going oh, two yeah. cushions long. Big time, yeah. Go two cushions long. You don't want to try to go in between the yeah. two stripes. You want to go long here. Oh, yeah. Go long here. Stay away from those balls. Yeah, just make sure you stay still this time, Cody. Stay away from those balls. Wow. That's what he's done. Well, now he's got a little bit Ooh, of a tester here. Oh, my God. Don't this is not the quick. type of a shot I want to shoot, 9-9. Nine, nine. Uh, I agree with you there. But I'm not Corey Duell. Wow. I'll tell you what, that was very one good. hell of a match. Wow. That, was a, pretty, that was a good match, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, was very exciting. <laughs> yeah. We, that was we, a good match. We see everything there. I yeah. mean, that was uh, very enjoyable. <laughs> uh, but I enjoy it when it's like that. I, yeah. I like it when the players show their human side, they suffer from the pressure. Yeah. And we also see some good play like there. The last rack was re very impressive. From, right. Uh, Corey yeah. it, from 9-7 down. Yeah, he, he was pretty worn. He, going, he was pretty worn going into that final ma final game. I'm amazed Both he won the were. match from 9-7. Yeah. We are the match girl, but it just shows yeah, it's you. It's amazing. Like you say. It's amazing if you, if you continue and stay with it. Yeah, yeah. Stay with it. That's the most important thing to learn here. Yeah. Stay with it because he was down 9-7. We didn't give yeah. him a chance. He 
was down earlier in the match by three games. Yeah. We didn't give him a chance. Yeah, he a stayed nice. with it. He yeah. came out winning the match. Yeah, he, uh, he'll be sleeping very happy tonight. Right. Shane, Shane the day, day number one was a very eventful day. And once again, you know, uh, we appreciate you coming up here yeah, and joining, the, joining pleasure. us. Yeah. Pleasure to be in here with you. And uh, Aki Stats keep doing great for Paul. And uh, the great, great supporters of Aki Stats, all the same people every year. They're, they're really loyal, loyal supporters. Mm -hmm. That's great. And very knowledgeable Paul fans. Okay, we're going to close it up on behalf of uh, Darren Appleton. This is Bill Inkerton saying thanks a lot for, for supporting Akistats and staying with us throughout this day number one. We'll be back for day number two with a, with a lot more very exciting matches coming up at day number two. See you tomorrow.